Boom! What's going on, go getters? In this week's episode, we talk to Tyler Calvi. Tyler's a bad dude who's got a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and he's the owner of Bad Company BJJ in Wilkesbury. Yeah, guys, this podcast was very fun. Make sure to watch this podcast in its entirety because we really get into it towards the end of the pod. Talk about all the crazy things going on in today's society, and it was a real blast. But one more thing: Phase two underway, coming soon. Boom! We got Bad Company. In the house, Let's GGX bag company Let's in the go. building. Represent Tyler Calvi. <laughs> what's up, baby? What's up, guys? Chilling, chilling. So, what's going on, man? How you doing? I'm good. Good. Yeah. Took a little bit to get us here, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Kev, you want to tell a story? Yeah, first, I think I think we around? talked about it on the last pod for a couple minutes. Actually, yeah, I was gonna make a clip out of it. I don't know if I did, but um, the last time we went to film this last week. And some fucking guy pulls up outside with the jackhammer, start <laughs> grrr, on we the ground chase and shit. Charlie? Chase yeah, Charlie chase on Charlie. Up. You remember the day we actually, we pulled up like four days after that. This was like a completely different guy, but straight back from where he was, there was this big ass tree. Yep. And this guy was on a big ass crane with a chainsaw just going mm. at it. The most unfortunate audio problems. At yeah. the GG pod, we this gotta week. take that dude out. We might yeah. have to fucking pull a trio on him and have to take him out, yeah. put him in the Ashi or something. I know yeah. we we should have sent Tyler out that <laughs> <Yeah>. day. <dad. laughs> <laughs> but yo, uh, so the other day we were, we were training with Ned. Yes. By the way, Ned's a motherfucker. If you listen to this, <laughs> Uncle Ned is the most interesting man alive. A motherfucker, Uncle Ned. I don't know if I met him yet. Big fella. I mean, yeah, yeah. He, you might have to just meet him to know yeah. what the, we're talking the story about. of Uncle Ned is crazy. What's his story? Well. First off, he, I tell Ned, Ned stories, and people yeah. are like, oh, that's the same guy? Oh, that's the same guy? Oh, that's mm. the same guy? He's the man of many hats. Yeah. He was, uh, I don't think he'll mind me telling me, but he used to be the <laughs> IT guy for uh, Adult World. Oh, so, wow. awesome. So he used to be the porn guy. <laughs> there you then, go. then he used to get these energy drinks called Sako. He was the Sako guy. Wow. Uh, you know, Legal marijuana guy. Uh, He's your guy. Jiu-jitsu guy. Yeah. So, yeah, you're like, that's the same dude? And, like, yeah, he does everything. That's pretty cool. So um, He works for the KGB. Yeah. We'll call him He's everything. Everything. <laughs> He's got everything. Yeah. Secret service He's, or something. He's a double agent. Yeah. <laughs> you pull up to him. He got, he's got his marijuana yeah. hat on. And you got your porn hat porn on. Hat. And, yeah, but not cool. So um, we, went, we, we trained with him, I think it was last Thursday, and he showed us that, that Drago sweep yeah. from, from the uh, bottom mount. Yes. And you're kind of like, you're first on the iron squirrel. I yes. learned that. That's, yep. that's some yeah, good stuff squirrel. right there. Yep. Bump, bump, get to your side, capture that leg. Dude, it's super effective. It is, well, it's Drigo sweet. Drigo? Yes. Oh, okay, Drigo. Rodrigo. Sweet. I learned it in Vegas from yeah. Rodrigo um, Gutierrez. Beast of a dude. Yeah. The reason why I adopted it was because every single day I knew he was going to do the Drigo sweep. Yeah. Every single day I knew it was coming. Could not stop it. Can't stop it. Yeah. Won't stop it. It's it's amazing. Yeah. It's different. It's yeah. so crazy. Yeah. So um, he was showing us that. And I know we did it from side control too with you that one day. But for yes. some reason when he showed it to me, it just clicked. And I just went to open mat at um, NEPA. And it, I was hitting it like every single time I rolled. Yeah. And um, one thing I was having a problem with though was... If you can't get that underhook, mm -hmm. it seems like you can't complete the sweep. Like, even if you capture the leg, if you can't get the underhook, if they're flattening you out and you can't get the underhook, you can't finish the sweep. Yes, yes. Uh, the underhook is crucial mm -hmm. for that. But it's the rocking of the boat. Yeah. So there is a, a, a counter to the counter. It's going to be the opposite sweep now. When they start when to, you go under the leg, right? Uh, you have the leg, but I'm saying just rocking the half guard or the position back to the opposite shoulder instead of you wrestling up. Yeah. You have to take them back that way because then they'll have to either get swept or occupy the hand to base, and then you can re-engage with the underhook. This is a weird game, man. It's crazy. Jiu Jitsu is a wild game. It's the best. It, well, it's the best because it's it's life, right? Yeah. It's you know all the techniques, everything is out there, but you know seeing is not believing, feeling is believing. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. fighting and fucking are the same thing. You can watch all the porn and all the UFC you want, but until you get in there, yeah. you don't know how long you're going to last. I guess that's right. You think you could do much better than oh, you actually course, can, right? Of course, yes. Like, I watch a fight. Oh, man, he should have just did Sweet. this. I would have right? just did that. What's infamous? Like, just stand up. Yes, yeah, yes, right? yes. But then it's like, you get in there and it's a whole different thing. Yeah, the feeling of it and the sensation of the push, the pull, underhook, fighting for positional little bit of like where my hip is yeah. here or here is success or failure. Yeah, man, it's crazy. Um, 
Speaking of that, I, I think we were at the Woodlands the other night. You said something about the three Fs. Finance. Three Fs. <laughs> Finance, fighting, and fucking. You can only teach them one. <laughs> you can only teach them. Really? Yeah. Why only one? Well, I feel like you'd be I good mean, at, I could. Yeah. I could teach it, but I don't know. Legally, I don't know where I can go. <laughs> I, I see. Mean? I see. You guys yeah. are too young. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I can get myself in some trouble. Yeah. But no, yeah, man, <clears throat> a man needs three pillars. He needs to know how to make some money. He needs to know how to fuck. And he needs to know how to fight. And if you lack in one of those, it was something you guys talked about on another podcast. People who lack the ability to do certain of those three start to build insecurities yes. amongst themselves. Yeah. So, you know, and I'm not saying you got to be Ron Jeremy, you know, Brock Lesnar mm. and fucking, you know, Bill Gates. Yeah. But you have to be proficient in three of those things as a man to be respected. Yeah. And to well, those know. are probably three of the most important pillars in a man's masculinity. Sure. So, like, right. for most people, that probably applies. And if you do lack in one of those areas, it could definitely bring on insecurity. For sure. For sure. And some overcompensate with one yes. of the other to make up for lacking one of those fields, you know? How the fuck do you acquire all three of those really important skills, though? But that's the it's like a renaissance, man. Yeah, but that's the video game, man. You yeah. Got, you got, that's why we yeah. live until 100. Yeah. You know? Get 100 years to figure it out? That's what I'm saying. Hopefully. I don't yeah. want to figure it out by the time I'm 60, though. I'm trying to be a young slanger still, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, a nice bank account and want to be able to kill some people. You probably can't do that when you're 80. What do you think is the importance of knowing how to fight as a man? Like, what do you think it is deeply? For me, from the difference between myself of before <coughs> jiu-jitsu and knowing I can fight. Yeah. Um, when I was younger, I fought all the time. Mm, you're one of those kids. Yeah, I was Scrappy just, motherfucker. I was a scrapper. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't know how tough I was, so I was always trying to prove how tough I was. Mm. But once you learn how to really do it, you you find yourself doing less and less. And mm. even, like, I'm a bouncer at a bar and club, and I'm the least fighting motherfucker there. Mm. It's always the big yeah. muscle guys who are punching people out. Mm. You know, or or trying to, or they get the the their ego sh- hurt the most when the guy calls them a pussy. Yeah, you know? me, I'm just like, okay, man, I'm a pussy. Go home. Yeah, I'll see you next week. Yeah, <laughs> well, when the objective is to really just get rid of the trouble. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. But I think maybe a lot of times during the conflict, my ego gets hurt a little bit, and I have to prove, oh, I have to beat this motherfucker. Yeah. Because if not, he's better than me. Or he's bigger than me. Or he's better than me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But as a martial artist, you have to, especially a jiu-jitsu practitioner, you have to be humbled many, many, many times before you can actually become good, right? It's like if I walked up to Bill Gates and said, you're a broke-ass bitch. Yeah. Do you think he's going to fucking pull his wallet <laughs> out and slap you with yeah, it? No. He shouldn't. He no. should just be like, mm, okay, dude. And yeah. Just hop in his fucking Beamer and leave, you know, yeah. or whatever the fuck he's driving. You yeah. Know? So if you know how to fight, you know, it shouldn't, that those ego strokes and hurts shouldn't affect you that much. Yeah. So- from being that scrappy do kid, mm. what got you into the gym, and what kept you there? Jujitsu. Yeah. Mm. Long story. Short story. Yeah, come okay. on, let's get into it. We're here for it. Uh, so, first off, I was I was I was twenty years old when I finally graduated high school. Okay. Because I got kicked out so many times. Really, you yeah. were that kid. I was bad. Wow. But I was also a pretty good football player, and my principal, who is still a great friend of mine and a mentor and a father figure uh, did some hard love, which kept me from mm-hmm. jail and some yeah. terrible things. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I was 20 when I, I graduated. Um, I got kicked out my senior year. I had to repeat my senior year, mm-hmm. which was fucking crazy tough. I thought it was the worst thing ever. It turned out to be the best thing ever. Um, 21 years old, it was my day before my birthday, maybe it was the day of my birthday, my friend's like, hey, we're going to go do Katrina Relief down south, and I was like, I want to go party, and he's like, no, I'm going to do this job, let's go, and I was like... Like Hurricane Katrina? Yeah. Helping to clean up and stuff? Yes. Oh, okay, cool. So, my buddy was like, let's go, and I, for some reason, I was like, yeah, okay, let's go. Yeah. And then it got postponed for a couple of days, then I got the call again, you going to come? I'm like... I don't know. I was kind of feeling it the other day. Now, I I don't know. I got nothing going on here. I'm going to stay here and do nothing. Smoke some weed and play some Madden, you know? And my mom's like, listen, you can come back in a week, two months, six months, whatever. Same idiots are going to be doing the same dumb shit. Uh, Just go. So I went down. Great experience. Um, But we used to go from 
Alabama to Mississippi every day, 45 minute hour drive. And we had this DVD called The Smashing Machine. It was a documentary. Just to clarify really quick, you're not from the area, right? You're from Colorado? No. Where are you from? I'm from uh, Scranton. Oh, really? So this was Scranton. Oh, Scranton. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The cool. Office. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a Scranton boy. All right. Uh, Scranton boy went to moved to Taylor. Went to Riverside. Graduated from Riverside. Um, but yeah, okay. while I was down there watching Smashing Machine, it was about this like steroided out dope head wrestler, sma- the Smashing Machine, yeah. fucking two hundred and sixty pound muscles, traps, yeah, hammer fisting people. Let's put a picture. Yeah, he Smashing dude. Machine. Yo, Bing. Bing. Yeah. dude. One of the spookiest looking dudes. Great documentary. But throughout the documentary, his life fell apart, whatever. But I used to watch like the first like 45 <clears throat> minutes of it every day. So yeah. much so like people were like, dude, I don't want to watch this fucking because we had a DVD player in the van. This yeah. big van. And they were like, dude, I don't want to watch this shit no more. So I'm like, when I go home, I'm going to become a UFC fighter. I'm going to become an MMA guy. Like that's what I'm going to yeah. do. That's yeah. my life. Yeah. You know? Uh, went back and I realized, you know, you can't become a wrestler at 20 years old, 21 years old. You have to kind of wrestle your whole life. Yeah. So started working construction up here. My boss at the time had a D another DVD. This motherfucker had the coolest DVD collection at the time. There was no, <laughs> there was no fucking YouTube, anything yet. Uh, it was what I, Ricks and Gracie uh-huh. choke documentary in, uh-huh. in his door. I remember like pulling it and I was looking at it, reading, I'd read yeah. it. Yeah. Back. And I'm like, I gotta ask him if I could borrow this. But then I was like, I don't want him to say no. Mm. So I'm just gonna take it for the night, watch it, and bring it back. <laughs> there you go. It's like watch. the Al Capone quote. Yo. It's like, yeah, it's like, uh, don't ask God for a bike. I know God doesn't work that way, so I'll steal a bike and ask God for forgiveness. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, go. it's easier to ask forgiveness than permission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was like, fuck it, I'm just gonna take it. And <laughs> I watched Hickson Gracie's choke, and Hickson was. And and the way that the Smash Machine spoiler went, it was he was the most dominant heavyweight pride fighter in the world. Turned out to be steroids, drugs, life yeah. fell apart, yeah. and became obscure nobody after a while. Hicks and Gracie starts choke. Oh, Hicks and Gracie four hundred no never known defeat. Blah blah blah. And I'm like, oh, this shit's gonna go bad. Just out of, like I'm like he's gonna lose. Hicks and Gracie's never been known to be, be defeated in his entire life. Hmm. So after watching that, I was like, this is like a fucking superpower. Because yeah. the guy, he was 185 pounds, not a huge guy. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, in his philosophy of life and fighting throughout that documentary, if you haven't seen it, watch it. Yeah. It is the fucking best thing you will ever see as far as jiu-jitsu goes. And he is, he spoke like Bruce Lee did. Hmm. Like when Bruce philosophically, like, right? Yeah, yeah like, yeah. and but it was he is who Bruce Lee, who people think Bruce Lee was. Yeah, like people think Bruce Lee was like accepting these challenge matches and blah blah blah. No, this motherfucker, like dudes were training for months on end to walk into his gym and fight him. He didn't know who the fuck they were. They yeah. they knew who he was. He was the prize. Wow. Can you imagine that? Like mm. you're just living your life, surfing, doing jujitsu, raising kids. Going to the grocery store and some motherfucker comes up and slaps you and says, "I want to, I want to take your crown." Yeah. yeah, and that's how he lived his whole existence. Wow. That's very primal. Yeah, it is. Yeah, crazy. Now, yeah. do you do you remember how grappling was perceived at that time? Like, was it something that was really only being revolutionized by the Gracies, or was there talk of this at the time? Like, um, at right that at that moment, I didn't. I only knew of Hoist because of the UFCs, yeah. but I didn't know what jujitsu was. I just knew the Gracies never lost. Mm. <laughs> so that was like a thing. You know, it was just like, oh, they didn't lose, yeah. you know, until Sakuraba. I remember the Gracie Hunter. My buddy showed me like a YouTube or like a downloaded like LimeWire video of Sakuraba beating all the Gracies. And I was like, I don't b- fucking believe this. It's yeah. got to be fake. Hmm. But Hickson, never known defeat, the, the, the greatest ever. And then from that day forth, I was like, this is something I'm going to do for the rest of my life. I do not give a fuck. And that was a thing before I got into football and athletics. I was a martial artist. I boxed. My uncle taught me boxing. Yeah. Uh, I did karate, did kung fu. Like, I was Bruce Lee movies all day, every day. Yeah. But, you know, after a while, you're just like, oh, Bruce Lee's kind of not, well, kung fu's kind of bullshit. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 <laughs> just like that. Yeah. <laughs> Knocking mics off yeah. and shit. <laughs> but it, when you, you've seen Hickson, you know, being just. Oh, that's for luck, buddy. Come What's on. going on here? Come on. Come on. Come on. Hey. Come on. All right, all right, this all right, fucking all right, guy. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> No, but it was uh, it was it was amazing. It was it it blew my mind, and and I, I will you know, 
obsessive thinking and and I just could not stop thinking yeah. about jujitsu after that and never returned it. Rob, sorry, I still have your DVD somewhere. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> never uh, returned now, now it. I quit my it. quit my job, <clears throat> and my buddy Jay was doing jujitsu, and I jumped in yeah. with him, and then and. 17 years later, I'm still doing it every single day. It seems like that's how it goes for a lot of MMA guys in general, though. Like, why is it always, like, it's, like, after you find out about whatever it is that you're currently doing, which for you is jujitsu, like, after you initially figured that out, it was like you were just all the way locked into it. And it seems like that happens for most guys in their, like, respective art and martial arts. Like, most guys I've talked to, that's always how the story goes, is, like, at some point, they found out about it. Once they found out about it and realized that they were interested in doing it, it was just locked in from there, and it was just their thing. Yeah, I don't know. I, I it, it was just something that, it, I don't know, uh, believe in universe, God, yeah. whatever, like that whole trip of me going to Mississippi and uh, everything to this point has been leading me to jiu-jitsu. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, jiu-jitsu has been my whole life. Mm. Uh Ever since that day, it was football up until that point. Yeah. Um, and then it was MMA for a while. I fought MMA. I, w- I wanted to be an MMA guy, but yeah. deep down, I saw how guys were getting treated in the MMA business, yeah. especially at that point. There was mm. no money at all. This was like 2006, 2007. Uh, no money whatsoever. And this is like when boxing was huge, right? I never but, understood why MMA caught on so late after boxing. Uh, it's perception. Mm. And and crazy conspiracy. There, there's a lot of uh, old money in boxing. Yes, there's a lot of old investments. Uh, mm. Anheuser Busch, Budweiser was actually uh, John McCain. Who was like, oh, human cockfighting and blah blah yeah. blah. And they and they were they were you know pretty much banished to like backstreet alley yeah. Alabama. They started doing UFCs in Alabama. It was illegal. At, at, it was illegal at, in at a lot of point, states. Right? Like yeah. Blood sport. It was yeah. illegal. Yeah. In most states it was illegal. Like they were doing it on Indian reservations because laws didn't apply. Huh. And then, uh, I mean, Pennsylvania only passed it officially for MMA to be like 2010. This isn't a good sport for MMA, is it? Or a good state for MMA, is it? Pennsylvania, like with all the laws and stuff. Isn't like that? New York the worst? I believe New York is the most York's reluctant, th- but reluctant. But boxing, huge in Philly, yeah. yeah, huge in New York, yeah. So they were resistant, very resistant. So you think it. you think a lot of guys are are investing to preserve MMA and kind of keep MMA or reserve boxing and keep MMA in the background? Like you think there's a they lot? Were. Of, yeah, that's they what were. Yeah, they were. Now, okay. now it's you know the internet. And all that, it's like you either get with it or yeah. you get left behind. Yeah. And boxing is getting left behind. It is. Because it they, is. they're it still is. doing their old bullshit where, you know, it's a lot of, if you're not undefeated, you don't matter. Yeah. And that's the beautiful thing about MMA that, you know, happened where a loss doesn't define yeah. you. It actually propels most yeah. guys. It's raw, too. It's super raw. Yeah. The UFC makes so much sense, though. Like, it's all under one organization. That was always my hardest problem following <laughs> boxing is that you have all these different uh programs you have all these different commissions and all these different just whatever that it gets so like the whole idea of what's going on gets lost in translation like i couldn't tell you who like like in, in boxing there's like multiple heavyweight champions in different programs and yes. like some of the guys are very underground you don't know who they are other guys you do know who they are but i feel like it's just very hard to understand what's going on in boxing for the casual fan, yeah, absolutely. No, that I that's that's like. Can you imagine? You know the the fucking Chiefs. Chiefs win the Super Bowl. I'm an Eagles fan, but yeah, Chiefs, win, Chiefs win the Super Bowl. But let's say the Eagles played in a different organization, yeah. and they are the champion of that organization. Yeah. And they're like, Nah, I'm the A side. You're the you're the B yeah. side. I want more money. You don't. Want, and then we never get to see that game. Yeah. So then you never get to see. And then. You know, Manny Pacquiao versus uh, Mayweather doesn't happen until they're, you know, it's no longer even yeah. worthy, you know? So, but there, there's still, you know, the Tyson Fury versus Deontay Wilder happened yeah. at the perfect time. And, and that's why Tyson Fury mm. is the most known boxer probably right now besides Mayweather yeah. because, you know, they put on the fight that needed to happen when it needed to happen. Where in the UFC, it's an organization, and they go number one fights number two, yeah. or if number two ain't ready, number three fights, and yeah. if number three ain't ready, number four fights, and number four, so on and so forth. Yeah. What do you think about all these superstar boxing matches that they're trying to set up? Like I know they're trying to set up Deontay Wilder versus um, Francis Ngannou, and they're trying to do Tyson Fury versus John, John Jones. Jones. Yeah. 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 I keep hearing all about that. Well, you know, it's the Connor effect. Yeah. You know, Connor. What Connor does 
all will try to yeah. do as well, you know? And sometimes it's, uh, you know, originality and, and the timing of things is what makes it beautiful. Yeah. And, and if you try to recreate the same thing over and over again, it just doesn't have the same flavor. Yeah. But with that said, you know, hats off to Jake Paul. You know, I, I'm not a huge fan of him personally. I didn't know him. He's younger than me. I didn't YouTube. Didn't know him like that. Disney yeah. bullshit. But that motherfucker I know can do a podcast or stream Twitch and play video games and make yeah. millions and millions of dollars. And that dude decided to go fight Tyrone Woodley and Anderson Silva. Yeah. So hats off to a dude like that. Like that. That's respect. Yeah. Because hey, he's good. Yeah. Got to give it to him. Yeah. He's, a, he's a good boxer. Even if he's not that good of a boxer, because there's a lot of boxers like, oh, he drops his hands. and yeah. Listen, he's willing to go fight yeah, Anderson he got Silva. He's willing to go fight Tyrone Woodley. Like, if I said, yeah. all right, man, you're going to go box Tyrone Woodley, not many people would jump no, at that. No. But if he goes into into any local boxing gym, like, he's a, he's a respected boxer. Sure. Right? Oh, of course. He, he's dedicated himself. What do you yeah. think the difference is, right? So you were talking about earlier that you can't just become a wrestler at 20. But can you become a boxer at 20? Yet again, very, very difficult to do. Same thing? Yes. With boxing? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's why Deontay Wilder was so special, because he literally picked up boxing at 20 and became an Olympic bronze yeah. medalist. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't yeah. give him that nuclear option that he has, though. Like, that's all genetic, I feel like. Like, he got very, I won't say lucky, but he was gifted. Deontay Wilder was gifted. Like, there's a good mix of that in there. Oh, absolutely. Well, yeah, of course. Yeah. But um, also, heavyweight. The bigger you get, the more power you have, the easier there's an eraser yeah. for a lot of the mistakes you make. But to be a 20-year-old, 145-pound champion, yeah. almost impossible because yeah. you're talking about skill. It's and, and to the layman, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, no, he, d he looks the same as Mayweather. Yeah. But Mayweather has literally been doing this forever. It's like, you know, hey, he's a pretty good guitar player. All right, yo, Eddie Van Halen. Yeah. Go up against him, and you're just like, they're all, oh, they're not even the same, same thing. Same species. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, they're the same species, but it's like a wolf yeah. and a fucking <laughs> and a chihuahua, fuck, yeah. you know yeah, what I mean? You're like, yeah, it's a <laughs> wolf and a chihuahua. You're yeah. like, I guess they had shared some DNA, but that ain't the they same They both lift their thing. leg when they piss, right. but it's not the not same. Not the you know? same thing, no. <laughs> uh, well, what do you think about jujitsu? So a lot of people start jujitsu late in life, and those guys yeah. become world champions. You mm. think it's a different thing? Uh, yes. Really? Because... The thing about jujitsu is, I think Nicky Rod started real, real late, didn't he? Really? What? Well, but he's a lifetime grappler. Though. He is a wrestler. Yeah. True, that is true. He's he, a wrestler. He's grappled his whole yeah. life, so there, there's that. Um, yeah, with jujitsu, I mean, I didn't start jujitsu until I was 20, 21. Yeah, 20, twenty-one. So, um, it just, but it's, it's a skill building. Me, I was able at the time to dedicate three years worth of work into one year. I was training three times a day. Yeah. Uh, I actually had like an intervention at my job at the time because I was leaving. I was leaving. <laughs> yeah. I was leaving to go train at noons and come back. And I, w I started, I was like 245, 250. Yeah. And I got down to like 200 pounds. <laughs> and like at my job, everybody was high on drugs. Uh, so like I came back, I'm sweating, I'm uh, fucking dipping out, I'm late. And yeah. they're like, listen, man, we need to have a talk. I'm like, no, I'm tired. No, you, I don't want to see you go down this road. And I was like, what the <laughs> fuck is they yeah. talking about? And I'm like, I go to jujitsu. And he's like, what? What the fuck is jujitsu? And I'm like, oh, it's, uh, he's like, don't leave for fucking lunch anymore, you asshole. Mm. I'm like, okay, that's hilarious. <laughs> but but yeah, it it's all about work. But the thing about jujitsu, there's so many ways to be effective. You could be a guard guy. You can be, and then there's specific rules that you can implement to win. And you know what I'm saying? But it's yeah. like anything else. You know, it's how do you get good at playing the guitar? You have to play the guitar all the time. Yeah. Did you recognize at those early ages of like 20, 21 where exactly like when you're training three times a day and you're ducking work to go to jujitsu practice and this like, did you realize where you wanted to take it back then? No. So what was the idea? Like, did you know at that time in life, did you have any idea of what you wanted to do with your life going forward? No. So no, it was no. just, just I didn't know what I, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life up until probably about six years ago when my son was born. <laughs> mm. Um, I just wanted to do jujitsu. Yeah. It just became an obsession of mine and it became, you know, my release and, you know, I, I deal with mental health issues and stuff like that. And I've always been, you know, an anxious person or thinking about the past and all that stuff. And that, that one time in jujitsu, the first time in jujitsu where I was playing jujitsu and I'm doing it and I didn't think about 
Hustle. girl, yeah. the bills, the, where where my future is going? Am yep. I am I a loser? Am I what is wrong with my life? All that went away yeah. until about you know hours after, and yeah. I was like, damn man, that's amazing! Like that felt so good. I was present and I was happy, yeah. and you know, so yep. yeah, and I just became addicted to that. So it's like its own form of meditation in a way. Yeah. Right, because sure. there's nothing else but problem solving. Like this guy has his throat, his hands around my neck, and I got to find a way to survive. Yeah, if you were thinking about your girl or your bills, you're yeah. fucked. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're fucked. You might as well tap and yep. you know, yeah. But did you notice as you were kind of like a rough kid growing up that your progression through jujitsu, your character started to change? And is there any uh, definitive points within that process that got you to have a light bulb go off in your head? Like maybe I should think this way or my perception can change in this way or mm. anything like that, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, just th- we talked about the insecurities of not having a purpose, of not having a community, of not having so much. You know, you feel like a loner. Yeah. And at 21 years old in this area, if you don't have something, you're just going to be a bar guy. Yeah. Go to the bar, go get drunk. And that's what I was doing. I mean, I partied most of my youth Mm -hmm. you know and um but because of jujitsu i i stopped drinking on friday nights because i wanted to do open mat on saturday and then we found a sunday class and then i stopped drinking on saturday Mm because i can go sunday yeah and uh but it was also the guys that i was surrounded by they were they were kicking my ass but Mm -hmm. they were all so nice and helpful and i was like man they could be dicks to me they they could be giving me wedgies right now but they're helping me and they're Mm -hmm. nice and um and yeah, it, it was just, I wanted to be more like them. Mm. So Versus yeah. the type of characters that you probably would have ran into if you decided to go out to the bar on Friday night. Yeah, yeah. Most of my friends, you know, are still like that. Yeah. You know, that well, I grew up with. Yeah, that's super honorable though, because maybe it is the lack of a male presence in a young man's life that causes him to take those bad turns. Sure. And maybe by you getting in those jujitsu gyms and having other men around you that are kind of giving you a bit of guidance showed you like, Oh, I don't have to be an absolute asshole. Sure. Or, Oh, I can make it. I could sacrifice pleasure. Maybe going to the bar, find a nice girl, getting drunk and feeling good. I could sacrifice this pleasure and go to open mat and get mm-hmm. fucked up for probably two hours. But with the intention of growing and getting better at something. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, it was everything I was looking for with jujitsu. Like I said, community, yeah. friendship, you know, positive outlet for aggression and insecurities and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. There's no book for finding that either. Like you can either just go down that route of being that guy that doesn't give a fuck about his future or you recognize early on that like you want to make a change. There's no like step by step process though of how to let go of that pleasure of having fun and going out to the club and hanging with women to like pursue something like you were doing at that time. There's no like step by step for that. You just have to it has to be you. It has to be within you. Yeah. And then, and just being a lifetime athlete, the competition too. Yeah, I was like, "What are these guys doing?" Now, if they all got shit faced drunk afterwards, I might still be doing it, mm-hmm. but they weren't. And I was like, "Okay, I want to do what they do. Yeah. I want to be like them. Like, how are they beating me? They show up every day. They're not. They're not hungover. They're not. You know, fucked up. So I'm like, I'm not gonna get fucked up." Yeah, I gotta, I gotta. If I'm training hungover and they're not, and they're already kicking my ass, they're fucking running the race, and now they're looking back at me, going, "Look at this fucking <coughs> yeah. tired ass motherfucker." Mm-hmm. So, what was your experience like as the nail? Because a lot of people know Tyler as the hammer nowadays. So, did you have problems with your ego? Did you have a problem getting subbed and like, you know, fuck that? You know, I'm, I don't know how the hell that happened, or making excuses, or, or what was your experience like? Well, um, no, because I came up and the people. The three people that were beating me the most were uh, my buddy Jay, who we, he was he was around the same size as me always, but he would triangle me every day, and he was the grimiest motherfucker ever. He'd go tanning, work at a pizza shop, and then he would triangle me with the fucking stinkiest pizza balls ever. So I was like, <laughs> I am never getting fucking triangled again. That was one motivation. <laughs> Two. Uh, Hedis was Jimmy. Guy. He's a, he's yeah. a motherfucker. Yeah, dude. he was the guy though. Like he was like everybody. Like Jay was even like, "Yo, this dude is the guy." Yeah. And I was like, "That fucking nerd." Yeah, you know, that's like, what James says too, yeah. dude. dude. But he was like seventeen at this time. Yeah, you know, or maybe eighteen, right? <laughs> and he was skinnier and smaller and nerdier than ever. And I was like, "No way!" And he when he twisted me up, I was like, 
whoa. So, <laughs> there, so it wasn't it wasn't an ego thing. Like, oh fuck, it. it was like, no, he has a skill and a superpower that I need to acquire. So, what do you do? What do you What are you doing, Jimmy? What do you yeah. What do you eat? What do you sleep like? Yeah, what do you yeah. What do you wear at night? You know, like I was willing to do anything. And then there was Jeff. Jeff who, Reese. Yeah, yeah Jeff yeah. Reese, the the godfather of all jujitsu in this area. I will always say he is the godfather of jiu- without him, jujitsu would not be where it is in this area. So that's how it all started? Like yeah. what what gym was that? Like what's so that was Gracie Hoist <clears throat> Gracie Jiu Jitsu Network. Yeah? Yes. And that's on Mulberry the Street. Mulberry Street, yeah. So how important are those two guys in into what's now alive today? Like Jeff and, and Hedis and then now bad company and NEPA and five seven O and mm. all these other gyms. Like yeah. what role do those guys play? And how did the actually how did the history kind of happen for all this thing all these gyms to emerge? Well, for me it was Jeff uh well Jeff was a purple belt at the time. Mm. So which was it's still kind of crazy because like a purple belt and, and, and even early on I was like I want to be a black belt in jujitsu. And people even in the jujitsu community were like, dude, that's not gonna happen. Like white White boys from Scranton don't become black belts. Mm. So so get that out of your head. Jeff's a purple belt, and he kills us all. Yeah. And, like, Jimmy's a blue belt, and he kills everybody else. So I'm like, fuck, yeah. How do we even go about this black belt who, business? Who was uh, Jeff under? Hoist. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. So yeah, he, like, got, he like got his personal belt from Hoist Gracie. Yes, personal friend of Hoist. He, uh, Hoist would come in. Hoist has ties to this area. He met his wife in Easton, PA. He was wow. stationed in Philly with Maxercise to help uh, Steve Maxwell build Maxercise originally. Mm. And he met his wife. She was in, I believe, medical school in Philly. Mm. She's from Easton. And then uh, one of the guys we trained was a doctor, knew her. Mm. Hoist everything, and then the first ever Hoist Gracie Jiu Jitsu Network, I believe, was in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Really, really, yeah. it was just kind of fucking crazy. Wow, <laughs> that is really wild. But I've I've met Hoist. I've no Hoist personally. <laughs> really, yeah, I've, I've been on trips. We he would come into to Scranton, do a seminar, and Whoa. then he would tr- go travel around the area, Connecticut, Philly, all these like drivable areas. We would drive him. He would go and teach his seminars. We would kind of be his Yuki. Wow. Me, I was younger, so I was just like, Jeff was like, you have potential, tie, and you you really like jiu-jitsu, wow. so I'll bring you along too. And then, you know, I just would just sit there quietly while hoist. And be like the wow. fly on the wall. Yeah. Dude, how crazy is that? You were watching the documentary, and then you're riding the car with yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hoist, it was, it was crazy. Were you like, fuck. like, what the fuck is going on right now? <laughs> yeah. Well, hoist, I mean, but hoist is famous. So, like, Hickson is like... Super famous in other pockets, and he's super famous now. Yeah. But then Hoist was famous. Like the man. Hoist was fam- Yeah. 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 Ladies loved him. Dudes <laughs> wanted dudes. It was weird to see like dudes react to him because like really? dudes like wanted to like be like his buddy and like yeah. yeah. Wow. So it was cool. And then he would be eating this Gracie diet shit. He tuna melts all the fucking time. I don't know. It was it was crazy. It was it was something to see. Yeah. It was wow. It was cool. It's That's crazy insane, what those guys single handedly did. To, in spreading like the art of jujitsu across the entire world, like when I when I all when I always hear that it comes back to that single family, it's like how the fuck do you get that message across an entire country like that, and then so effectively to to where to today like everybody, it's like jujitsu is like the new big thing, like it's so wildly popularized right now. It's like how does a single family do that? Well, you you have to do it. They they. they Originally started with, we're going to put out a newspaper article, bring me your tough guys. Yeah. Want to fight me? In Brazil, they would two challenge matches. Yeah. Elio, uh, Carlos Gracie uh, was the business guy. He put out the front page article, come fight my brother. Really? <laughs> and, That's and, how it happened? Yeah, and he'll prove you wrong. And little Elio, 140 pounds, would fight these monsters for hours, 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 yeah. hours. Fight for an hour. Fight for an hour. It's hard to fight for five minutes in that fight bad for a sweat. F- yeah, <laughs> for a fucking hour yeah. on a fucking basketball court, mm. right? Um, sometimes you would lose, but it was so impressive to people that this one hundred forty-five pound guy, who was a sickly little dude, kind of was you know fighting these monsters, and then yeah. and then they just recreated in America, mm. nineteen ninety-three. Let's put Hoist in a cage with these these karate guys and kung fu yeah. guys and you know, Art Jimerson, boxer, but 
Yeah. You know, but uh, they were all bigger than him. Yeah. They were all what people perceived to be tough guys. Yeah. And he beat them all. And then he did it again. And then he did it again. And then it was undeniable. So his business model was literally showing people that this is what you need to learn or I'm going to kill you every time. Pretty much. And it still is. To me, that's my business model. Like when I uh, train at a gym or want to run my gym or whatever the case is, I need to be able to not beat you up, uh, but I need to show you the effectiveness of yeah. the art. And that's the cool thing about jujitsu because growing up in karate, it was all like, well, I could show you, but I don't want to, I don't want to kill you. Yeah. The, the death touch and it. In jiu-jitsu, it was just like, nah, man, there ain't no fucking death touch. There ain't no pressure points. It's literally... Oh, no, that Mr. Miyagi point, that's something serious. That's <laughs> that we, could, we can't get into that, though. We're going to have to pay Tyler ten ninety nine on the <laughs> bad company seminar. I apologize in advance. <laughs> I, anywhere, I would apologize in advance. For oh, I'm coming out, motherfuckers, it. with that, son. Uh, yeah. A little, right. little cross yeah. face. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wipe his nose. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, but no, but there there was no secret. There is no magic fucking thing. And that was a thing, too. You watch all these fucking movies where a guy like, <clears throat> meets Mr. Miyagi, and Mr. Miyagi yeah. makes him fucking do this weird shit. They go to the mountains, and then he comes back a master of... And I go, I go to jiu-jitsu. I'm like, oh, it's like football. Yeah. It's like you show up every day, you practice a fucking skill, you do the techniques over and over and over, and it's so boring and so monotonous but in the end, it creates a champion or a master, yeah. you know? Well, what other art is, like, more misrepresented in the world in terms of, like, film and, like, video games than any style of fighting? It's so, like, misinterpreted through film and games that you can shoot fireballs and fucking teleport around and kick people's heads off and shit. Like, it's so not what happens in the real world. And nothing else is misrepresented in that way, in my opinion, as misrepresented. Yeah, no, and, and and that's where the Gracies came to be, what, because there were all these senseis and sifus and masters yeah. that were, you know, uh, you ever see Bloodsport? Mm-hmm. I've Van heard Dam- of it. Van Damme, okay. So there was a story of Frank Dukes who yeah. gets an invite to the Kumite, which is basically UFC, but it's an underground lair in fucking China, yeah. and, you know, and it was a fucking lie. Frank Dukes is a fucking con artist. Mm. But nobody could check them back then yeah. because it wasn't sparring. There was no sparring to be had. It was these mystical techniques. Yeah. So you're like, oh, man, that guy's a black belt in fucking shang shang chu shu fucking <laughs> ku, ku fan do. And you're yeah. like, oh, okay, cool. I guess he's badass. And then uh, and another misconception, the biggest misconception, I have like, I, I almost got into a fist fight. Uh, uh, this kid was in the military and he did a little bit of combatives and he was saying that his hands are registered lethal weapons. That is a fucking lie. I'm a black belt in jujitsu. Yeah. Conor McGregor slapped an old man in a bar. For and, not drinking his beer, right? Right. <laughs> and, and, and got a misdemeanor. Yeah. Fl- he is as certified lethal weapon with his hands as anybody could be. Mike Tyson beat his wife. And got a simple domestic yeah. charge. Now, I'm not saying if you're a fucking professional fighter and you go to the eyes of the court, they go, well, you should know better. You're you're a dangerous person. Yeah. But lethal weapon, like, bro, if I pistol whip you yeah. or if I punch you, it ain't the same thing. No. And that's what the, the, that was another fucking lie and misconception. Yeah. Is, I, oh, my guy, oh, I can't fight. I'm, my hands are registered lethal weapons. Where? Where did you go to register? <laughs> I got my black belt jujitsu. I never got the DMV post. Yeah. You huh. know, like. Hey, register yourself as a lethal weapon. Like I always wondered fuck, how that worked. Fuck the idiots. Yeah. But wait, don't I've don't always you, heard that. Doesn't that happen when you get a license to fight though? As a as a professional or amateur, doesn't doesn't that kind of But how many stories do you way? hear? But how many stories do you hear of a guy who you know, a pro fighter who smacks a guy? Dude, uh, I got this Nick one Di- story. Nate Diaz. Oh yeah. He yeah. just did what he did. Yeah. Yeah. And he's going to get as simple of assault as yeah. I would or you would or he would or she would. But so, and he, <laughs> and, and, but in the eyes of the court, they go, yo, dude, you, you're going to get the strictest, yeah, you know, punishment yeah. most likely because yeah. you should know better. Right. But it's not like, oh, you know, if I, he goes and pistol whips somebody. Yeah. Now we're like, dude, you're going to jail for a long time, brother. <laughs> yeah. You brandish yeah. a firearm and smack someone. That's a lethal weapon. Yeah. Baseball bat across the lips, that's a lethal <laughs> weapon. Not a fucking guy who's, a, you know, like I said, you should know better. You should be more disciplined. Yeah. But the whole I'm a lethal weapon bullshit, I mean, Silliness. Man. Silly? 
crazy. It's that's yeah. a fucking kung fu. That's like fucking nonsense. I know this one dude. I won't say his name, but he's a he's a fighter in this area, and I heard stories about him fucking head kicking people in front of pizza shops. <laughs> Won't say his name though, but I heard he just is fucking fighting motherfuckers outside. <laughs> right, and if he was oh a registered lethal God. weapon, he'd be in jail for the rest better, of his life. Though. He yeah. should know better. Right. You probably shouldn't be open fucking. I mean, no matter who you are, you probably shouldn't be head kicking people in front of pizza places, right? <laughs> for sure. But if he was a registered lethal weapon, he'd be in jail for the rest of his life. That's right. Yeah. So it's it's yeah. There's a lot of misconceptions with fighting, and the biggest misconception is most people think they know how to do it. Yeah, and it is a skill like anything else. Like that's like like guys who are like, I would just see red and I would oh, win yeah. a fight. And I'm like, all right, bro, uh, take apart that transmission. You're like, well, I'm not mad enough. It's like, bro, it's mm, a skill. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a fucking skill. That should be a red flag right there. If like anger is your biggest right. like tool yeah. in aiding you to win a fight, that's that's <laughs> You're nonsense. A fucking moron. You ever yeah. have a guy come into a bad company like that? Not bad like company. Say, say not I'm bad not a, company. I'm a street fighter or something like that. Not bad company, but it used to be more prevalent. Yeah, yeah. There used to be challenges, multiple. Like, really? That, but that's where you know Jeff built built his um his name because there were uh, other schools at the time with an, a budding MMA programs, mm-hmm. and we were a real martial art jujitsu fight school mm-hmm. and guys would come in and they would you can tell that they were not there to participate they yeah. were there to test themselves and mm. you know and jeff would be like oh maybe you will partner up with somebody uh, uh how about ty ty yeah you ty you yeah. want to go with him wink 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 mm. and i'm like okay i get this the mad enforcer yes so That's how do cool. you break those guys in? You just show them like, look, this is what I can do. This is what you can do, and then you just gotta let them know. Break yeah, it man. to them easy. You ever see a nail that you ever see a nail that sticks out of the wall? Oh yeah. So there's two ways to go about it. You <laughs> hammer it, you hammer it into place, or you hammer it and it breaks the fuck off, and you never see it again. Yeah. So. I got mad and forced by James Delaney mm-hmm. when yeah. I first started jujitsu. Yeah. Yeah. I told a story on a podcast. I had James on here, mm-hmm. and yeah, he fucked me up pretty good. Yeah. yeah. True story. Yeah. Yeah. And and the cool thing about jujitsu, it is it is the gentle art. So you, you, I can fuck you. I fuck everybody up as much as I can, but I always will fuck you up with jujitsu. Mm-hmm. I'm never going to pick you up and slam you, even if I can. Like, I roll with girls. And James slammed the shit out of me, bro. Yeah, but I won't But I, I won't do that. You know, there, there's time, There's people that, you know, if they, they push it. My thing with my jujitsu is I'm like a, a rubber band. You know, you pull and it, it's going to snap back as hard as you want to pull it, um, you know? Yeah. But, um... At first, I'm going to be as gentle as possible. Even, like, I roll with girls, and I tap them as many times as I can. Not that's, because, that's a dilemma not, for a lot of guys. Not because I can, or, like, I'm bigger, stronger, but I'm, like, I'm going to pass your guard. I'm going to mount you. I'm going to take your back. I'm going to choke you in all the jiu ways possible because I think it's disingenuous for me to let you play because – Here's the thing. You need reality. Jiu-jitsu is reality. I'm selling reality. Mm. We just talked about all yeah. the fake shit. Yeah. Do you know how many girls walk around that took a self-defense class who think they can defend themselves? And when a guy pops out of a corner somewhere. With man and, strength. And, and goes at you. Yep. And you've never felt that before because your jiu-jitsu instructor thinks you're cute and wants to play with you. Yeah. And let you win. Mm, that's a good point. That's a good point. I will never let anyone beat me for the sake of beating me. I kids, anything. You know what I mean? Not like I, Maddie Leslie just fought MMA uh, the other night. Yep. Um, when he was fucking twelve years old, I would beat him. Yep. I wouldn't pick him up, slam him, muscle him around, but I would out jujitsu him. I will play chess as much as possible yeah. because in the end, he must know this is real. Mm-hmm. But before that, there are so many guys who let him win. That he had a, he was 10 years old. He was talking shit. He thought he was beating people. Yeah. You know what I wanted to, so I had, I had written something down going into this podcast. Very, very similar to what we're talking about right now. So, <clears throat> so in its purest form, karate is a badass martial art. Like if you know karate, you could fuck some shit up. Right. But with the rise in popularity of karate, it kind of dulled the water a little bit. Mm-hmm. It seemed like anybody can really get a black belt as a, as a karate pra- as a karateka, they call them. Mm-hmm. And it, it's, it sort of loses its genuinity a bit. So like if a guy has a black belt in karate, it's like, can he really fuck me up? Or does he just have a black belt? Cause he can chop a piece of wood. So do you think that there is potential? Cause I've heard this on another podcast before. I think it was Faraz Sahabi and Joe Rogan. They were talking about 
with the rise in popularity of jujitsu, do you think that that can happen with the sport of jujitsu for just showing up and giving guys belts? Yes, it already has. You think so? Yeah. Like, so there's some gyms, right, where a purple belt isn't as legit as, as he should be. Sure. Right? Sure. That's, sure. that's, uh, that's pretty crazy, huh? Is there any like valid reason in which you would want to do that though? Money. Does it just look like money? It's a bit. It becomes yeah. a business. It just looks better time, for right? your money. academy if money. you have a bunch of purple, brown, and black belts coming out of your no. academy, right? Money. No, but a lot of times it's just you know guys stick around for belts, and if you're they're constantly uh, getting a cookie, yes. and they stick around. Yeah. Yes. Where in our network, Jeff. Yeah. You know our philosophy was always: I'd rather be a blue belt beating purple belts than be a purple belt getting beat by blue yeah. belts. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, we will marinate you much longer, yeah. but the steak tastes better. Mm. The steak is real, you know? So. so as like a coach, can you explain, because I, I like at a base level understand like the belt system in jujitsu, but how do you guys go about deciding when somebody's ready? Like, because it is, it's not universal. It's not black and white for when you think somebody's ready or when somebody's not ready. So what is your procedure like? Like, how do you know when somebody's ready? Um, Different belts represent different things mm. for me. Um, the blue belt is is not I'm not gonna say the easiest to get, but the easiest to get because you can either get the blue belt through skill or through hard work. Mm. But everything else after that, it it's there's a lot more that goes in, yeah. into it. But that's where people are, are, they I've gotten this question many many times. How how do you know? You know you watch how they roll with other people. Yeah. You watch how they react to situations. Mm. And then as a, the cool thing about jujitsu, I get to spar with you yeah. for real. So I will put you in positions and situations and I'm going to see your reactions. And when you react like a jujitsu guy, mm. like a blue belt, I go, mm. yeah. I, feel, I can feel you being what you are. That's yeah. the cool thing about jujitsu. Mm. I get to grab onto mm. you and push and pull you and your reactions will tell me where you're at. Yeah. You know? Also, like I said, how do you roll with big guys? How do you roll with small guys? How do you roll with, like, how do you deal with this? You know, because some guys can be really good guard players, but they got no top game. And yeah. it's throughout the, 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 the maturation process between white and black, you know, there will be, you know, certain skills you will develop and yeah. you need to develop to be a blue belt, purple belt, brown belt, black mm -hmm. belt. But, um, yeah, it's, it's time invested. Showing up, yeah. and then, like I said, the ultimate thing is the belt jiu-jitsu. You can't fake it. The, the belt mm. the belt is this thick. It covers two inches of my ass. My skills must protect the rest, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, yeah, the, the cool thing, it's like boxing. How do you know he's a good boxer? Well, I spar with him, and he, he yeah. slipped and countered and did everything mm. right. What did you call it in boxing? Like, what do they call it in boxing? Like Master, Master of sport. sport, is that yeah. what it is? So how does one know when you become a... As is, I would imagine it's probably the same feeling, right? Because it's not something that is black and white. It's, like, up to your coach. So I'd imagine it's a very similar procedure, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, but there are certain uh, parameters, I think, like, that make a blue belt, that make a purple belt, that yeah. make a brown belt, you know? But to clarify, though, that is not universal. So that's different everywhere. And that goes back to the original question he was just asking is, like, that gets a little crazy in some gyms where they're just giving out belts for monetary reasons. Or I always wonder that with like celebrities, because there's a lot of celebrities now that you see do jujitsu out of nowhere and they're leveling up rapidly. Yeah, they don't want to roll because they don't want to fuck their face up, yeah. but they'll have a purple belt somehow. How the fuck do you have a purple belt? Yeah, like yeah. that's like I always I always wondered that specifically with celebrities though, because there's a lot of celebrities in today's day and age because of the rise in popularity of jujitsu that they all want to try this new thing, but then you see them leveling up so fast and it's like, yeah. ah, is that real? Yeah. Uh Tom Hardy's the realest motherfucker out there, and he's a blue belt. Mm. Tom Hardy, he he does that shit for real, right? Yeah, I see pictures of him yeah, yeah, competing. Yeah, yeah. See Zuckerberg had a competition. Huh? Yeah, yeah. That's he's badass. that. That's like one though. I don't it's like, like that. I don't like that. Why not? Cause he's. He runs the world. I don't it's, want to get it's, it's, too. it's what we were talking about before. <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg fucks. He has the money, and now he's uh, learning how to fight. So, so he, bad he's him. gonna master it all. That guy. He's yeah. gonna fucking take the world. He might, he might take over the world. Zuck, fuck. when the metaverse comes yeah. around, oh my god! If Mark it's Zuckerberg over. could fuck up somebody, then it's it's you might as well just wave the white flag. Well, yeah. the only hope we have is that he loves jujitsu for real so much that he like he's like let's not put this AI shit just yet. Because mm. we want people to have reality just yeah. a little more. Because jujitsu is so real. Mm. Yeah. You know, so he's just like, eh, you can't, you can do everything in the metaverse, but become good at jujitsu. Yeah. You must do jujitsu for real. Mm -hmm. Maybe those are some parameters. <laughs> Does that worry you with the nature of like 
AI and enhancements and just like what's bound to come in the future that at some point, like physicality isn't going to be as important as like intelligence or we're going to get to a point where you have biotic arms. So it doesn't fucking matter if you hit a guillotine, I could just rip your head off my metal hands. Like, yeah, yeah. that's kind of worried. Yeah. That's, more that's for worrying. my son more than me. But yeah. I'll, hopefully I'll be fucking dead before any, before the Terminators come. That's always what I hope too. Cause I always think like, I always tell people when they say uh, like, don't get old, like hopefully they'll have a time machine by the time I'm older. But honestly, I hope I kind of get to avoid the entire stretch of the universe where it's just sheer chaos. Cause I'm sure at least our society will probably get there. Who knows, point. man? Who really knows? It's all conspiracy. <laughs> but think of all of the like rapid innovations that we've experienced over the last just 21 years of our existence. Like think of where that goes in another 80 years. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Neuralink with yeah. uh, you know Elon Musk. Soon it like like if you live without a smartphone, like you're dumber. Like mm. like it for I, I I'm older than you guys. I lived without the internet. Yeah. And now with the, the internet. internet. Now the internet is at my mm. fingertips, mm -hmm. you know, we had dial up, yeah. like nobody, nobody <laughs> pick up the fucking phone. I'm fucking, yeah. I am, and we're basically the cool thing about AOL Messenger. We we're texting each other, yeah, but yeah. through the computer. Mm. Now you text each other constantly, right? So, um, yeah, it, it, it's it's crazy. It's gonna happen. Everything's gonna happen. But Neuralink is scary because at some point you must have it to. To compete yes. in the world, yes. like you, it's very difficult for you to be a person without a smartphone because mm. you can say whatever you want to say, ah, oh, blah, 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 and then you go, mm. I don't no, know, you're wrong. Man. Well, <laughs> well, there's a lot that comes with the smartphone too, though. Don't you think? A lot of added baggage. I think it, I think it takes away a lot from the the human experience, or at least what was once the human experience. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, the, but the being present and experiencing nature mm. and having a relationship and like that's why this is important because we're talking. Yes. Yeah. You know, we're actually conversating, and I can read your body language, and there's emotion involved. Yeah. Right? You about to start going crazy. The universe has a way, though, of throwing, like, curveballs at us that makes you kind of get grounded in that way. Like, I know for, like, how terrible, say, for example, COVID was, I feel like at that time of life, it really made, like, the people that you were already very close to, it made you much more close. Like, you got to spend more time with your family or you got to spend more time with your friends and your loved ones. Like, it seems like the universe has a weird way of throwing those curveballs at us where, like, it'll ground you again at some point. Like, think so? it, it'll, like, it'll throw some crazy curveball at you that... You have no choice but to chill out a little bit with all the innovation. And become and like, a human again? Yeah. It's at least what it seems like over the last few years for us. Or maybe the world has just gotten uncontrollably crazy and we're just used to it now. Yeah, dude, I can't tell you how often I just, for no reason, with no conscious thought, go like this. Oh, yeah. yeah. And just check up on the Instagram and mm. oh, yeah. see what's going on in the world. And it takes me away. I yeah. Mean, yeah. You know? And I, I agree with what you're saying, though, too, because, like, for how beneficial it is, it also comes with a lot of extra value. I Like, a lot of it's unmeasurable, too, because smartphones have only been around for so long. So mm. it's like, how do you really know what the long-lasting effects of technology like that will be? And I think it's only really going to get worse. You have, like, you talk Neuralink, you talk, uh, like, VR headsets. Like, at what point does all of that shit become way too advanced to the point where people are just living in metaverse-type societies? Sooner than later. I yeah. think people already live online. Yeah. You know, you know uh, people only exist online. You know, you see people with only girls with only fans, and they can't do anything. Like, I, you go to concerts. I mean, I... People don't watch the concert. They go. They watch yeah. the concert through their phone. Crazy. While yes. Like that. I, I have a thing where like if I go anywhere like that, you know, I'll take for the first like five minutes, I'll take as much photos and videos as I can, yeah. and then I put it in my pocket. Yes. But, but people it, at the club, they they're like, I I work at the Woodlands at a club. Like some girls only smile when there's pictures and videos being taken. Mm. The other time they're they're on their phone playing. Yeah. And they might as well be home. Hmm. So seriously, you're right. So you, there are drawbacks, of course, but people are willing to, you know, give away freedom for convenience. And that also goes to everything we talk about as far as government and stuff like yeah. that. You know, Thomas Jefferson has a great quote. He's like, if you are willing to give away your freedoms for safety, then you deserve neither. Mm. And I think people give away their freedoms for comfort. Yes. And if you do that, you're going to find yourself very uncomfortable. And that's where we are, too. We have everything we need, everything, yep. everything, everything mm -hmm. you need and want at your fingertips. We have knowledge, unmatched knowledge yeah. in this. Yep. And people spend it masturbating constantly. Yep. If it's not Pornhub, 
It's Instagram. Instagram's yep. masturbation. It's mental mm. masturbation. It, it does It's nothing. dopamine, dude. Yeah. It yeah. just releases, oh, I feel good, or this is comfortable to me. Yes, but, but, it, does, but it makes people uncomfortable. Because they're not in the grand scheme of life, right? Because they're not experiencing life. They're not getting mm. outside, getting sunshine, getting. So they think it's comfortable to lay in bed and on the couch and watch Netflix. It, 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 the crazy thing is, is like now social media and all these, they're not even, they don't even want you to be on Facebook. They want you to be on Facebook, Instagram, and Netflix all simultaneously. Open apps, right? Just go from one yep. to the next to the next. I seen this one thing. It said that if, if the. The service, I suppose, is free. Mm. You're likely not the customer, but the commodity. Mm -hmm. So, like, you can go on Pornhub for free, dude. Sure. You can watch it all day. You can go on Instagram for free all day. And you're just consuming this shit all day. And what do they do? They sell your information to ad companies. They're making money off of your attention yes. yeah. at the end of the day. Yes. You know? And no, I we, think you should be mindful of that. Yeah. Like, dude, what the fuck am I doing? People have... No idea. That's the thing, too, is they don't want you to be conscious of these things because if you are conscious of these things, then you start to be conscious of where you put your energy. It is an energy. Sure. It's an energy universe. They're sure. trying to harvest your energy. This is the matrix. Yes. Yeah. Dude, seriously. In the, in the matrix, they took your body heat to, to, yeah. to fuel their agenda, whichever was the robots. Yeah. Now they steal your energy yep. mm. through your phone. Through likes, through pictures, through yes. data, yeah. through whatever it is, so that they can push and make billions and millions, and you are there just chasing, chasing the wheel. Yeah. Dude. Do you think people don't realize, or do you think, as a society, people are just ignorant at like, at the grand scheme of what that does to an individual? But both. Like I said, I have a phone right now. I can Google what they do with my data. Yes. People will never go and Google that. Because they don't care. They do not care. Mm. So if, if you are if you are ignorant or are you are willfully doing it, yeah, it doesn't matter mm. because there is information out there. You should be always aware. You know, you should be perceptive of everything yes. you put your energy into. Sure. And people aren't like TikTok has the most evasive terms and conditions of oh anything God, ever. Yeah. yeah. And people, girls go, nah. I'm not, I'm not doing anything wrong anyway, mm -hmm. so I don't care. It's like, no, it's not about that. It's yeah. about the fact that you are so willing to just go accept. Yeah. Have you ever read complete terms and conditions of anything you've ever accepted? Not TikTok specifically, but I was read them on yeah. a podcast, and yeah. it is mine. What are they? Yeah. What are some of them? I think well, it's like one of the they could track your your um, time spent on other apps yeah, as well, yes. right? Not only while you're on TikTok, but they can mm. track what you're doing on other yeah. applications as well. I yeah. don't want to speak like too well out of tongue because again, I don't super remember, but I remember one of the wildest key points that I heard about the whole TikTok thing was that I could not even have TikTok on my phone, my computer, mm. your phone, whatever. The roadcaster doesn't fucking support TikTok, but any, anyways, <clears throat> he can have TikTok on his phone, Yes, but TikTok can gather data from Around device it. yeah local devices that wow. don't even possess the like, app of like tiktok the same if you're connected to the same wi-fi yeah wow. they can access other so maybe you are the son of a cia agent and china wants to mm. tap into your dad's laptop yeah. and you guys are sharing the same wi-fi well speaking of china do you know that the tiktok platform is different in the U.S. than it is. Yeah. China. Oh, of course. Yeah, the algorithm is completely different. So the 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 videos that we're seeing here in the U.S. is completely different to what the kids are seeing in China. Yes. Right. In China, they're seeing these young uh, academics Scholars, yeah. and mm -hmm. athletes, and it's also cut at a certain time. You can't watch it past I think nine p.m. Is that, that's for that's for most and things though in China. I believe. And you can't continuously scroll. Yeah. It stops. Really. Yeah. Because this has a uh, soothing effect. Uh -huh. So people scroll and scroll, yeah, and scroll yeah. and scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll. This was this is actually like the internet like uh, pacifier because it started with like uh, fruit ninja, yeah, you know, uh, Angry Bird, yeah, and people there's Tinder, comfort, Tinder, swipe, 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 and now Instagram, Facebook. You know what I mean? And so in uh, in China, yeah, you can only swipe for so long; it'll stop it and it'll wow. freeze it. So you can only consume so much at a, a yeah. so what's that saying like what's the agenda what's the idea here i don't want to get too crazy yeah. but 
I know, I know. World domination. What's happening, right? <laughs> I don't Dude. know if it's for the better or for the worse, but I did hear, I believe we were just talking about this with Brian the other day, that I believe the United States has gotten some kind of bill passed that TikTok will have to have a United States-based HQ, or HQ mm. so that, like, the United States will have a decent amount more control over what actually goes on with TikTok rather than it just being local to China and they get to make all the rules and decisions. Again, what's that telling you, dude? Cause yeah. I don't think, I don't, I don't think warfare nowadays is all missiles and weapons and shit. I, I don't think, think it is at all. I think it might be a lot about control mm-hmm. of the masses. Like, yo, how can I control your yeah. group? Well, it's all about influence. Yeah. Right. How, right? Do, how can I influence you? And, the thing about America is we are the biggest defense bill by far of any other country right. in yes. the history of history. I think it's so I think it's more so than the next three countries combined. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So if I was gonna go up against that motherfucker, I would go, mm, let's corrupt the youth. This is the art of war. Yeah. Yeah. Let's corrupt the youth. Maybe let's start a COVID disease and, and crash an economy. Let's you know, so you destabilize the economy, you uh you know, you corrupt the youth. Mm. And then, you know, the next thing you know, now the missiles come, you know? Mm -hmm. On that same note, though, I know that there was a, and I don't know the guy's name, but I know that there was a documentary made by, I believe he was a double agent, a spy that lived in Russia and was a member of the KGB and then ended up fleeing his country and coming to America. Maybe he was Ned. Could have been Ned. (laughs) It might have been. (laughs) Ned, we're watching (laughs) you. I don't remember the guy's name, but I remember hearing about this on Rogan and they played it. And, bro, it was mind-blowing. And, mind you, this video was recorded in, like, the 1980s or the 1990s or something like that. And the guy was basically talking about Russia's step-by-step plan to, like, capture the minds of, like, American civilians. And uh, basically what they were talking about, I'm sure you guys are aware of, like, the troll farm things that, like, they do online where Mm -hmm. they'll have, like, uh, I think it was, like, 19 of the top 20 uh, Christian Facebook pages are all troll farms right in Russia. But basically this guy was explaining that their strategy was to literally just infect the minds uh, of young kids with propaganda to hopes of one day, like making our at least our young generations very frail and very susceptible to like bullshit i guess you can say to keep it simple and uh to anybody interested definitely go check that out i don't remember the guy's name Mm -hmm. but it was very interesting because when the video was recorded to where we are now in 2023 it's like it happened exactly how the guy described it Mm -hmm. so i find that part pretty mind-blowing it's not you won't beat america with guns that's not how it works anymore it's you got to uh there's different warfare yeah Yeah, it's new for I, th- I think uh, I saw something that there's, there's commonalities in the end of empires. Yes. And what's happening societally, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. But one of the big ones was the average duration of an empire. And I think it was 175 to around 200 years yeah. of an empire, like Rome or um, uh, I think Persia was one. And then the yeah. Mongols had their empire. And I think the U.S. is right, r- dancing right on that line. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and also, uh, what you were talking about, like it, it's the Communist Manifesto. It's called the Long mm. March. It's called the Long March. Long March. And that's where it's crazy because we live in this TikTok 15-second video time where people, when you talk about stuff like this, they, they tune out and they're like, eh, 100 years? Mm. <laughs> Nobody's going to do that. No, they will. And they would because that's the Long March. Yeah. You, can, you mm, cannot... The Long you, fucking March. You cannot kill... A great nation overnight. Mm. It has to be done systematically. Yes. And the best way to do it is, you know, you infect the minds of the youth. And then you become obsessed with ideologies and identity. Yes. That, that's what happened to all of them. It, everything becomes your identity now. And, you know, I'm not going to get, we're not going to get into all that, but, you know, where, you know, you lose sense of community. Yes. And all that stuff. You kill religion. Values. You kill religion. Yep. Yes. All that stuff. A and lot happens within gender, too, but I think that's where gender, you're going. Yeah. We could just, yeah, no, yeah. yeah. snip down to There's no now. point. Yeah. But, but you've seen Rome and all that. Like, they did the same thing. Same, they become yes. obsessed with gender. Yes. They become yeah. obsessed with race. Identity. They become obsessed with identity. Which, when I heard that, bro, it blew my mind. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah I and, get and, where you're coming from. And the only way back from this is community, con- togetherness, you know, but... Mm. They've pushed this whole America is this evil thing. And I'm not saying America is the greatest. I'm a, I am a firm believer in the U.S. government is corrupt and all that stuff. But I also know that you, you, me, people I see on the street every day, we are way more alike than we are different. Yes. And that's the thing, you know, but 
but the divide and conquer is a real thing. Mm. So if I was going to have to go and fight a hundred cats, yeah, I would first, I would go before I went in there and battled a hundred cats, I would go, well, you know, black cats don't like the white cats, you know, the, the, the striped ones don't like the non-striped ones. Yeah. See what he was doing to your family? Yes. You oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Huh? Yep. They, they don't, don't like you. They, they, yeah. they don't like you. The, the pretty ones don't like the other yeah. ones. The long hair is the long hair one. Yeah. Feed one. Yep. Feed a couple of them. Yeah. Don't feed the other ones. And then before you know it, they're all killing each other. Mm-hmm. And then you just walk in and just smash them with a hammer. Yeah. And then you're like, eh. And that's what governments do. That's what other wow. governments will try and do. And I always say forever and ever, we are more alike than we are different. That's very so, true. So you need to <laughs> accept people for how they are yeah. and don't push your own bullshit on other people. Because in the end, w- until you start talking about like these trigger words, like gender is this and race is that and Republican Democrat, before those things come in and people get all triggered, you're having a fucking great time drinking a coffee. Yes. We, were, we were just having a great time until mm-hmm. you mentioned Trump and yeah. now you want to kill me. Now I'm an asshole. Yeah. No, we listen, just because of what I believe, I believe you can believe yeah. what you believe. But in the end, are, do you have a job? Yeah. You pay mm. taxes? Me too. It seems like when you're not worried about those things, like these social issues, life just becomes more enjoyable. Even if it's like, in the grand scheme, a lot of these things might be very serious problems. It seems mm. like if you can find a way to just put that behind you for a few seconds and just enjoy life for what it is, everything is more simple. Absolutely. Everything. Yeah. Your happiness, your health, your, your physicality, everything is so much better if you're not focused on the bullshit. And like I said, I get like there's real problems and real things do need to be discussed. But it seems people really just like to get caught up on differences and they just enjoy to argue. Well, and that's why I was going to say to start the pipe, we kind of got off, but I appreciate you guys doing this because it is very important for alternative forms of media now. Because media, like you just said, oh, not to get caught up in this. So Yeah, it's very simple to say that, but you cannot watch the news and Be separate from it because Mm. the news, the media, and all its forms, Disney, they will always push that towards you, your kids, all of this to keep it in your forefront. You know, it's very hard to get away from it because media is no longer just the newspaper and CNN and Fox News. It's everywhere. It's late night talk shows and all that stuff. And they bombard you and make you take a stance. It's notifications sent directly to your phone. Like the shit that's been pissing me off recently. And I don't even know how to fucking stop it is the iPhone. I was waiting for there to be a new one. You have to rock and piss real quick. Go for it. The iPhone has like a thing where like they obviously have like their news page Mm -hmm. and they will just send me random fucking bullshit articles that I've never turned on notifications for news. I've never activated that news app. I don't know why, but all of a sudden it was, I guess it was really ever since I got this new phone. So maybe that has something to do with it, Mm -hmm. but it just seems like they will just send me shit that I do not care about all the time. And not only them, like it's other social media platforms as well. Like they'll be like, did you see so-and-so shared a post on Instagram? Uh, maybe whatever it tells you in the fucking description. But now it's you don't even got to seek it. They send it directly to you. Attention economy. Oh, you forgot about us for yeah. a second. Hold on. Mm. Gotcha. You know? Why do you think, though, we are drawn more to controversy than, or controversy? Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> Controversy. Oh, controversy. There you go. Then uh, just like the good things that happen in the news. Now, this has been like, a, I, I guess, like a reoccurring problem for a very long time. But it seems like us as a society, mm. we're way more inclined to um, enjoy things that may have a more distasteful ending. So it could be like anything in terms of violence. There could be a fire that happened down on 8th Street. There could It could be whatever, a building collapsed. Why are we so much more drawn to that than when the firefighter saves the kitten in the tree or when the the little kid that's been missing for a week gets found? Like, why are we more inclined to fall for the 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 bullshit? Yeah. Like the, I, I think it's an an. Here's the thing about the people who run the media as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. Edward Bernays wrote a book in the the twenties, I believe, called Propaganda. Yeah, and he was the first. He was uh, Freud's nephew, I believe. And so he understood the human psychology. He was the first PR person. He was the first guy to ever be like, hey, you want to sell cigarettes? Have a girl with bright red lipstick Mm. smoking a cigarette. Mm. You want to sell that car? Make it red because it 
in passion yeah. and it catches the eye. And, you know, oh, they have, you know, sexy people doing this and blah, blah, blah. And, and athletes you want to be like. Yes. It was endorsing all, your brand. Right. Yeah. But it, but originally it wasn't even that. It was primal. Women, it was primal. Yeah, yeah. It was, and the color red was yeah. big, you know, because Coca-Cola, it's red. Mm -hmm. So it catches the eye. It, it's back to evolutionary fruits, ripeness, all that stuff. I so, see. So what, coming back to what you were saying is it's, it's an evolutionary thing. It's you can, you know, eat 30 clams. At a, or an oysters at an oyster cookout, you eat one bad oyster, you may never eat oysters again. Mm. So it is it is an evolutionary thing like, okay, oh, you pet the dog, nice. Oh, you pet that, nice. Oh, you pet the alligator. Oh, Johnny lost his fucking hand. Yeah. Don't pet the fucking alligator. So you remember those things. You stick out. I'm, I'm sure sometimes with you guys in this podcast, oh, dude, it was great. Tyler's awesome. Hey, Tyler, yo, great guest. Okay. Yeah, he's a fucking douchebag. I'll, I will focus more on that yeah. because... Yeah. Because, you know, there's a, a wiring in us that... That's crazy. Right on cue, these cocksuckers just sent me one. <laughs> Trump was arranged hey. in Miami courtroom where he pleaded not guilty. Literally, we were just, just talking, talking about, about that, that, and these cocksuckers just sent me one. But just like that. But it is. We're, we're, we're definitely more prone to remember the negative. Yeah, survival you know? thing, right? Yeah. It's a survival thing. Yeah, yeah. And that's always the idea I come back to, but I feel like that's too simple because I feel like it wasn't always like that. Like, maybe I was just young and naive, but I feel like it wasn't always about the problems in the well, world. Well, I think I think what's similar, too, is, like, why are we so infatuated with gossip? Mm. Why are we so infatuated with bullshit rather than talking about ideas and growth and elevation? Yeah. We want to talk about the bullshit. We like watching, you know, the, the housewives of Atlanta and shit mm. and stupid shit. Like, what makes us so attracted to that? I think, too, it it's a lot easier to watch chaos than create yeah. glory for yourself because creating <sighs> creating positivity is as work to sure. watch to watch a train mm. wreck is nothing but press play uh. you know because but if you watch uh inspirational stuff all the time you at some point it moves you to have to act and you have to move and, and you got to struggle involved yeah. in that and there's struggle and there's hardship yeah, involved in that yes sweat some sweat and right? hard work but, but when you see some bullshit, you can yeah. compare yourself and say, I'm way better than them. I don't want to go men, women here, but it's like men, you know, action versus, you know, gossip where dudes don't pick at each other forever. Like eventually there's a high, there's a, the hierarchy of violence. Yeah. Eventually you talk shit to me long enough. Yeah. Even if you're bigger, stronger than me, I got it as a man, I'm going to step up and punch you in the mouth yeah. and then you're going to punch me in the mouth and we're going to punch each other. And then at, at some point. You know, you watch the UFC. They talk all the shit, all the shit. Afterwards, what do they do? Honor. Hug, it's respect. Bro, I respect you. I love you. But if we didn't do that, and all we did was talk shit all the time, you can talk shit mm. forever. Yeah. Internet, I can type, fuck you, every single day. Yeah. But yeah. I can't punch you in the face and get punched in the face every day. It just mm. doesn't, there's too much action. So it's the same thing as with that. I think it's a lot easier for people to watch the Housewives of fucking Atlanta because also it makes you feel a little better about yourself. Right. You're like, well, yeah. I'm not as shitty of a human because yeah. yep. Stacy fucked Johnny and Billy <laughs> and Bobby. You know, I'm only fucking Billy and Johnny, you know? Like, <laughs> but whatever the case is, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, that's good, though. And I think going back to what you were saying, though, uh, that's, I think, why, well, I think tying all of this in, I think that's why there's being such, there's, there's such a pull to masculinity nowadays because I think mm. that maybe over time we've lost touch with that. And I think young men started to crave, like, what does it mean to be a man? What does it mean to be masculine? And yeah. I think that uh, that's an important pillar of it is understanding violence. Like, I know that when I first meet a man who's respectable and honorable, there is potential for violence between the two of us. Mm. It's just by, like, a look in the eye or whatever. And I think... Um, I think that that keeps things. I think that's like more traditional. It's mutually assured destruction. Yeah. yeah. At the biggest scale, that's kind of what we're living through now. Like I know countries. if I fuck with you, you're gonna have a line that I can cross. Yeah. And it's right. gonna be war. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yes. Regardless, but but they tell us that that's not okay. It's not okay, and that we should seize our aggression and all that other stuff. Yeah. But no, you you have to channel your aggression yes. yeah. into into positivity. Yeah. And that's a thing where they're they they got into this. You know, act how you feel. And I'm not saying you shouldn't feel emotions. You know, I have my mental issues and not, I, you know, all that, you know. But um, if I acted how I felt, people yeah. would be hurt, mm -hmm. you know. Um, school shootings and all this stuff happen because they don't know how to properly address their feelings. Mm -hmm. So they, they act. And with men especially, we are prone to anger sure. a lot of the times. Yeah. 
So, you know, if you don't have a proper channel and a proper community to deal with these primal urges, and also we we, we used to hunt and fight and yeah, kill yeah. with wars. You guys, yeah. you know, you guys talked about the the what is it when you see a guy walk in and you can I take him or not? Oh, like yeah. I said, at some point throughout history, you looked at the mountaintop and there were Mongols and yeah. Vikings, and yes. you had to go. Do we fight these motherfuckers? Mm. Can we fight these motherfuckers? Or do we grab the women and children and get on the boats yeah. and get the fuck out of here? Because it was being real. And now we, they've tried to take all that away. And then, you know, masculinity and toxic masculinity and all that, those words, you know, when people, oh, masculinity is bad. And it, it, no, you're not, you're thinking of non-masculine men. You're looking for overcompensating insecure dudes. The dude who's on steroids and beats his w woman, yeah. that's not masculine. Yeah. Yes. Just because he has muscle, that's not masculine. Yep. A masculine man is a provider and a protector. Yes. I was always taught you never hurt women ever. And if you see somebody hurting a woman or a child, you stand up. I don't give a fuck if he's six foot eight, yeah. 270 pounds, and he, you've seen him kill three men before you. You go in there and you're willing to die to protect the weaker and the smaller people. Yes. That's masculinity. That's what it, 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 it means to me. Yes. But yeah, the whole, it, it, but it, you know, that's what the whole obsession with these weird social mm. things where it's not based in reality and it's not based on what you see on a regular basis. It's, it's what the media wants to tell you and yes. the narrative they want to create. And that's what I was saying with you guys, you guys doing what you're doing here. Hopefully, you know, this is, there's some truth in everything you guys do here that touches people and inspires people. Yeah, man, that's the idea. Yeah, like you, because you guys could be doing nonsense. You guys could be doing prank shows. You guys could be yeah. playing on Twitch <laughs> and just, you know, telling people whatever, you know, Aiden Ross type nonsense yep. and all that stuff. You know, you guys could be trying to do that, but you guys are connecting with people, communicating with people, yep. and that, that you guys don't realize how important this is. Yep, that's the idea, man. We yep. want to share relevant ideas and yep. we want to get people thinking the same way that maybe we used yeah. two years ago or that we, us three are right now. And sadly, like we were talking about before, there's only really two paths you could take to solve any of these problems. It's either we can be at each other's throats all day and we can hop on Instagram and Twitter and talk shit on each other all day. Or you can s like at least get a step closer through discourse, just talking about it and figuring things out. That's why I always hate the idea, especially on the media, because like you can get a lot of flack for saying a lot of things. The idea that, you shouldn't be able to have a conversation mm. about something. Yeah. Which is it's is absolutely ridiculous to me. I think the only way to find a solution to any problem is through discourse. Yeah. You have to understand their side, they have to understand your side, and whatever the fuck happens from there happens from there. But the conversation has to be had. In my opinion, it has to be had. The moment that there's no more conversation is the moment this world takes a very dangerous turn. Yeah, and the the Trump thing <laughs> always got me cuz I I'm not a big Trump guy. I'm not, a, I don't hate Trump either, but yeah. sometimes he says things and I'm just like, how is there no one on the left who can just put together thoughts and just talk to this guy and have a conversation and make him look silly Yeah, because he's saying silly things like, mm -hmm. so, but instead of canceling him and canceling people yes. who have bad speech, why can't you just formulate your thoughts and mm. come in here and decimate him with facts yes. and reality because it seems like it, it, it theoretically would be easy yeah. especially with the points that you're making like a lot of the shit he says is so outrageous and so yeah. wild sometimes that you would think in theory it would be so easy to just contradict what he's saying right but, but why is that so hard because you have a joe biden who cannot do that mm. you know or you put together a hillary clinton who is so corrupt and to where it, he can just say well Okay, you got a moral high ground lady. Yeah. How many people die that are connected to you? Mm. Or what? So if you mm. are, if you're dirtier than him, yes, then yeah. you can't. There's no validity there, to what you right. said. We need to get Jocko Willing at the at the fucking 2024. Well, bro, they, they talked about that. Who Jocko. was it? It was was it was it him and Rogan or was it him and somebody else? <laughs> yeah, Tulsi, it was Tulsi, Jocko, Tulsi Gabbard. Ah, uh, yes, and Jocko and, and Tulsi Gabbard. That is what a, they were talking about. And that's a Joe Rogan. Got three guys talk about Joe Rogan. Uh, how, how, how original is that? But, <laughs> but Tulsi, but they, the the Democratic Party corrupted everyone's mind. Yeah. Media corrupted everyone's mind to make people think that Tulsi Gabbard is a fucking spy for Russia. She's a a a, a veteran. She's yeah. a woman. She's a woman of color. She she checks all the boxes hmm. of things that you would want to represent it in America. Yes. And they shit on her because she wasn't in the club. Yeah. And that mm. that's a whole different story for a different time. But if you ain't in the club, and so that's yeah. why I don't think that they want real change. No. They want 
this car. They are they want to play the game, man. They they want disaster because it's easier to control people when they're in chaos. Yes, fear that your logic brain and your fear brain yeah. cannot coexist at the same time. So if they have you constantly kind of on edge with fear yeah. and aggression and anger and emotion, yes, you can't tap into the logic brain and go, wait, hold on, you're you're what? Yeah. Okay. Wait. He he's doing. But didn't you? No. Mm. But no. They go. Yeah. Yeah. He fucking said that, and he's attacking me personally. And yeah. he's like, I don't think he is, because he don't know you. So disconnect yeah. from that emotion for a second. And what is really going on here? Mm. You know. And if, like, as a couple years ago, when Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump were running for president, we got a way bigger problem yeah. than MAGA weirdos in red hats. It's it is way yeah. bigger than that we have we have failed on every front if those yeah. are our two representatives like there's nobody better mm. that's my thing we we need to we need to do better yeah as people we need we need better leaders yeah. but but we can have that at a smaller level and that's something i believe in i think smaller levels you know it's the pebble in the pond yeah to create bigger ripples but people are too ready to jump on the, the red train or the blue train yes. to where it ain't about the red or blue train. It's about Wilkes-Barre mm -hmm. train, Scranton train, yes. even smaller, like your neighborhood train, your community, your friends. Yes. Your, so you need to come together like this, have conversations, disagree, you know, without calling each other assholes and, you know, idiots and all that. Um, but that's the point. Like, is you shouldn't want yes men around you either. You, sure. the only way to figure these things out is by disagreeing. Because, sure. and it doesn't have to be the disagreement where I'm right, you're wrong, no. or you're right, I'm wrong. It mm -hmm. is a disagreement where we can find common ground. Like we can meet each other in the middle. That's the discourse that I'm referring to. Is figuring that out. I, I don't think like if everything's just yes, 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 yes. There is no discourse. Nothing gets figured out, and everything just stays the same. You have to have disagreement. Sure to make change but it right. has to be it has to come from the right place you can't just want to be right and but, i think that's the problem with a lot of people but that's the thing they, they don't want to be they don't they just want their team to win yes and they don't care how illogical the argument is because mm. it because throughout covid and all that mm. it, it became completely illogical yeah. they can say the same thing and if you're wearing a red tie or a blue tie it's the greatest thing or the worst yeah. thing ever just go watch the news. You yeah. know, Trump's arraigned. One one will say this is a complete attack on democracy, and the other one will say this is justice at its finest, and he needs to go to jail forever. And it's like, wait, this is the same fucking yeah. story. Who's right here? Like, let's yeah. why why can't and you know they? But listen, that's I believe it's all part of the plan. Yeah. That's what they want. They want us to be divided because a divided nation is way easier to mm. manipulate. But what's scary about that though is like don't other countries recognize that that is a major problem with America. And you would think yeah, like sure. as they're the, loving it for as sure. the leaders of the free world, because America, in my opinion, is the greatest country. It's yes. like, if you were the leader of this place, wouldn't you want it to be as strong as it could be? Because if not, you're very susceptible to these other countries. Dude, malfuckery. Like other countries know we're not the greatest country, even our allies. Yeah. Like if you go over to Europe, they yeah. know like, dude, what the fuck is going on mm. over there? But that's scary that, like, even our own leaders don't recognize that we are a fucking target on we're vulnerable. everybody's like we're vulnerable. Right now, you know? Well, here's the thing, though. This is where things have changed. And if you you got to read history, and this is where people, you, you must learn history. You must, must, must learn history. Our forefathers, taxation without representation, if you go and read their writings, they are not talking about Britain and all that stuff as the nation. They're talking about the fractional reserve banking system. And when you talk about the fractional reserve banking system and this, the Federal Reserve Bank, which is not a part of America, it is a privately owned bank. Mm. So when you say, don't, when you want our leaders to want America to be great, well, here's the crazy part about it is the Federal Reserve Banking System, they are not Americans. They make money in America, yeah. but they also make money everywhere in the world. Mm. So if America falls tomorrow, they will prop up China as the greatest nation yeah. in the world. If China falls, they will do Russia and so on and so forth because they control the money. And uh, uh, the Rock of uh, Rothschild bought up all after Napoleon. They bought up all the the wealth in Britain because they they he he fed them false news back then. You know, fake news. Fed them fake news that Napoleon won, mm. and they. People were selling their stocks in Britain and all this, blah, 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 blah. He bought it all up. 
and they, he became the wealthiest, most powerful yeah. family in the world. And his great quote was, I don't care who wears the crown. I care who controls the money, and mm. I control the money. Wow. And that's America. It doesn't yeah. matter who you put in office. Mm. There are somebody that the guy with the red tie or the blue tie has to sit down and have a conversation with. And it's probably yeah. it's more like a, a, a collection of people. But they say, listen, this is what we want. We want gas to be this. We want this to be yeah. that. We're going to create scarcity. We're going to create war. We're going to create famine. Mm. We're going to create all these things. And it makes the world go around, and it makes us all rich. Yeah. You in? Yes. Cool. You out? Okay, well, John F. Kennedy. Yeah. You know mm. what I'm saying? Mm. That's the scary part, right? Yeah. Or, or I, Andrew Tate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't want to go all Tate stuff, but, you know, they, they cancel you and then they jail you. Trump is going through the same thing. They try to cancel him. They try to jail you. Yeah. And then they try and kill you. I mean, it, it's, it's pretty, it, it, you know, because the messenger, people don't like the messenger, the Trump and the Tate, they go, oh, fuck, that's stupid. Yeah. Listen, go throughout history. I say go read history. Yeah. Real history, not just the shit you taught in school. I, I, I they taught me World War Two seven hundred and fifty times. I'm like, okay. I'm like, is there any other thing going on? Mm. No, go read world history, and you realize how, you know, the same plays are being ran today as they are run in Rome and, and yeah. all of all of it. So you have to you have to be very uh, perspicacious. What does <laughs> someone? <that's laughs> what, what, what does the individual need to do? If, if he understands this information, if he mm. understands what's going on in the world, at least to a to a, a little bit, mm. what does the individual need to do to keep himself sharp, to keep himself yeah. free? Yep, yeah. be the pebble. You 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 can't shake people awake out of the matrix or whatever it is. But I've always the true warriors, and not just fighters, but the true warriors for freedom and love and equality. They see others and they recognize it and they go, okay. Like I said, how, how I came into a jiu-jitsu room and I, I said, okay, they didn't tell me, Tyler, you need to stop drinking. You need to do this. You need to do that. I saw them doing it. And by their discipline and their growth, I was inspired by that. Mm -hmm. So you be the best you. Mm -hmm. And somebody's going to come to you and go, man, you know, what's your secret? Yeah. And then you can say, well, I do this, I do that. And, I, and they might take four out of the five. Yeah. You know, and that's all you can do. You you build your best version of yourself. Yeah. Let's create a community of yeah. bad motherfuckers, dude. It's Bro, the goal. Go get this you, podcast. Dude, you guys are doing it here with this this house and everything like that. Like you should move in all your best homies, pool your money, pool your resources, yeah. figure out stock markets and all that, and then find yourself a way in, in your your most trustworthy homies, not the guy who's cool at the party yep, and not yeah. like the ones that you can trust, you know, with your girl, with your money, with your dog, all that. And yep. then you guys create a, a fucking, unit, a unit, have a bad unit. Yeah. Bad company. I mean, that's bad, a bad <laughs> company. Oh, baby. Is that how it happened? <laughs> kind of. What? Are we doing this like this? It, it might happen. The what? revolution. Yo. We're taking over the world, son. The three of us right here about that's to be tridents and fucking hammers. But, We're on top of the mountains. But that's the thing. If 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 you conduct yourself in a certain manner, it's infectious. Yeah, sure is. Absolutely. It's like the Michael Jordan effect in a way. Like, I'm the best. Yeah. And everybody around me is going to get real good. Or the Tom Brady effect. Or you will yeah. die. Yeah. <laughs> or you will die trying. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. That yeah. is beautiful, though. I mean, that's a great example. It's like you got to you got to lead by example, and you got to show people that. There is positivity out there, I guess you could say, but not only that, like there is room to make the entire world better and you just got to show people that that's possible and people will just follow along. Sure. Same way people blindly follow the negativity. Some people will blindly follow the positivity as well because it just makes sense. That's what's right. I'll tell you what, man, that's a great <laughs> purpose in life for anybody who doesn't have one yet. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like just to commit to that. Let me be the best possible person I could be and let me positively positively affect everybody around me yeah but that also scares the shit out of people yeah because in that, masses be, yeah because it is a, a a huge responsibility for sure man because now you are not just you mm -hmm. you yeah. are you are your future you can be impactful mm. you know and and listen i'm a, I, I believe in god and uh, I feel like he's been pushing me towards this forever. And yeah. that's why I run my gym the way I do. Yeah. And people train for free and, and all that because it's not about the money, you know. It's about me being able to impact people who I see myself in. And there were people who did the same for me. Mm -hmm. Ty, you don't have to, you don't have to pay. I, when I, went, I'm, I moved to Vegas to train, shout out to Sim and Sam Go. 
Uh, yeah, can we I, tell that story too? Are you traveling the world and like you get on the road yeah. and just going about? Yeah, yeah get into yeah. that. Well, so I packed up. I got my black belt, which I was pissed about. Here? Um, you yeah, got it here? Yeah. Right? And I was like ready to leave. And I was like, fuck. I'm like, now nah, I'm a black belt. And mm. I got to go travel. Because I was moving to California to join Atos and yeah. Andre Gaval and drink yeah. the Kool-Aid. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but so I went from here. I drove from here. I drove down to Virginia. I used to live in Virginia Beach for a while uh, growing up. Uh, my brother was in the military and I trained at a school there. Mm -hmm. A great guy, Nestor. Uh What's he, Coastal Jiu Jitsu now? Yeah, Coastal Jiu Jitsu. It was Lynx back then, but Coastal Jiu Jitsu, great guy. Stopped there, trained there, went down, stopped in Georgia just for, you know, a bite to eat and a cup of coffee. Went down, visit my mom in Daytona. From Daytona to Alabama, got a flat, so we had to stay there for a minute. Alabama to Tyler, Texas. Tyler, Texas. Uh, shout out to Scoob. Hanging out with Scooby for a while, a couple of weeks. This is like the Ronin days. This is yeah. when you're a it traveling, awesome. a traveling was, samurai. Was, I wish I had a little more money, and uh, I wish I could like have enjoyed the journey because I was so anxious about like how the fuck am I going to make this happen? Sure. Yeah. Uh, but Tyler, Texas to Arizona, Arizona up to Oklahoma, Oklahoma over to no Oklahoma, Texas, Oklahoma, Oklahoma to Arizona, Arizona to Vegas. Stopped mm -hmm. in Damn. Vegas. Stopped in Vegas. And you're never, trying to get to Cali, right? Trying to get to Cali. Okay, okay. So stopped in Vegas because I was like, I've never been here. Been invited a bunch by friends. And I was like, dude, I'm not a Vegas guy. I don't drink all that much anymore. I ain't got money to spend like that. I don't want to go pop bottles in the club. Like, this ain't for me. Showed up there. I was like, this place is fucking awesome. Yeah? It's so awesome, man. It just, it, it's just, like, imagine Times Square. Yeah. Like, ten times and everybody there is like on vacation for the most part. Yeah. So everybody is either celebrating a birthday, uh -huh. a wedding, a, and everybody's in a good mood for the most part. And it, I was just like legal uh, marijuana. So you know, <laughs> it was legal. I was smoking it, and I was Jiu just looking, and I was just looking, <laughs> but I was just looking at people, and I'm just like, dude, this place is crazy. And I'm yeah. like, okay. Um, then I went and trained at Cobra Kai, and it was awesome. Yeah. Uh, Jay Shap was fucking awesome. Jerry Shapiro. Uh, it was just cool dude. A lot of the, I was like, man, and I just kept thinking about it. I was in the back of my mind, cool, cool, cool. And then I was like, <laughs> I went up to California, Yosemite Valley. My buddy Tempa had a weed farm up there, and we we're trimming it for him. Mm -hmm. So that's how I made my money. I was like dead broke. Like I was like, that's awesome. I was like putting across the fucking finish line, like no gas in the car. Just made it. That's just hilarious. made it. Like. Whew, okay, he's like, bro, I got you. I got chickens. I'll feed you eggs and steak, and you're good. You just work for me, cut all these trees up, and I'll pay you. So, <laughs> wow, that's a cool lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. an awesome game. I would have did that yeah. shit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was really good. When I finally hit California, Yosemite Valley, I was like, oh, okay, this is cool. But yeah. then I started. I was like, okay, I'm gonna make this amount of money. And I'm like, let me look at San Diego. Okay, I could live in San Diego for like a month. Or let me look at Vegas. And I was like, oh, shit. Because in Vegas, it's just all... Uh, then this was before the Raiders and stuff, so it was a lot, lot cheaper to live there. And yeah. they're always constantly building mm. a p apartment complex and stuff. So, I mean, I was in the, the hood. I mean, it was, it was run-down neighborhood, all that, but beautiful uh, yeah. high-rise, you know, studio apartment, 600 bucks a month. Mm. And I was like, I could, with the money I make, I could live here for three months and figure it out. Mm. Boom. You know, threw the money down, uh, stayed, and then I started training. But uh, back to the the free the free uh, training was I had a pawn my PS4 at one point, and they found out about it, and I went to pay, you know, from my little shit job working at a a little hot dog stand in one of the casinos, and you know Sam was just like, no, tell you're good. I was like, what do you mean? I didn't pay this money. He's like, I know. You don't have to pay no more. Just, just show up here. Don't be a fucking dickhead. You know, help clean. And just, so that's my philosophy on stuff. And Jeff did the same for me a long time ago, too. Uh, so, you know, it was all that. But, yeah, it was, mm. it was a great experience. And it was really cool to show up and get that type of response from someone because they don't know me. They didn't know my brother. They don't know my mom. They didn't, you know what I mean? Around here, it's like, Oh, they know you who know yep. you and know, you yeah. know him and he yep. knows her. And that's you kind of get things done that way and it's mm -hmm. a lot easier. But there I was like literally like all I had was my jujitsu skills and my my morals. Yeah. Yeah. And for them to accept me and, and allow me to, you know, be part of their team was it was 
it was life changing. That's awesome. Yeah. How, how how did you compete out there as a black belt? Like, were there guys that are just on a different level, or were you going out there still mil- like hammering motherfuckers? No, uh, that first month or two, I, I was I was really questioning. Yeah, yeah, hmm. I was really questioning. But you know, it's you. you I, I I've done enough jujitsu that after a while you you start to to calibrate to the, the yeah. place. The the biggest thing it wasn't like you know, and I went to San Francisco and trained there. It's not that it was like, oh man, their jujitsu was so much better. It was just like there's like five of me there. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, I mean instead of one of me yeah. here. Yeah. You know, there's there's ten of the tough brown belt that I roll with, you know, and yeah. like so it's just bigger pool. You know, and then there was guys it was it was really cool because it was like, well what are you doing out here? Why'd you move here? Jiu Jitsu. Oh cool, me too. Hmm. I was like, oh here I'm just like I want to do jujitsu for the rest of my life. They're like, what the fuck? That's hmm. not a thing. Yeah. Go to the bar, get a job that you hate, yep. and pay your bills and just wait to die. Hmm eat pizza every week you know and i was like i don't want to do that dude that's the trap i mean we can get into this conversation for years but that's the trap that kevin and i talk about every single day we have a segment on the podcast we call corporate nightmares Mm. because dude it's so real and it's so universal Mm -hmm. yeah like grow up graduate high school get a job that you probably don't like that much you're you're probably miserable every day from nine to five yeah and then when you come home you're exhausted and you don't want to do much and then you do that for forty years. Yeah, well, all for that fucking pension, well, though. And then, and then, <laughs> and then that sounds like a crazy your, negotiation to me. Yeah. yeah, soothe yourself with some alcohol and some yeah. some shitty foods too. Yeah, yeah, jack off a few times. Yeah. eat hub, McDonald's once or twice. Hub. And hey, let me find do it again girl, tomorrow. Find a girl who doesn't really appreciate you and you don't really like, but you're both bored enough to just stick together for <laughs> long enough. You know, yeah. People, people, it's a scary cycle, man. Yeah. What's terrifying about it, though, is like this isn't a fucking video game where you respawn. It's like you get one chance to do it right. It is like a video game in that, though. It is, though. You're like, you get get a raw character who doesn't know shit. Yeah. And then you get to just level up and upgrade and experience stuff. And if you 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 could become, you could become the level 100 master or whatever it is that you want to do. Yes. Jiu jitsu, woodworking, whatever, dog training. And and being a little bit older than you guys, you know, a lot older than you guys, but uh, it, at this point, there was nothing I ever really wanted that I never got. Yeah. Mm. And that's something I, I like, like, you, there, there's things I wanted, like, I want to play the guitar, mm. but I don't put any effort into yeah. doing it. So yeah, it, it sounds does, cool. Yeah, it sounds cool. But that's what people do. They're like, I want this. I want that. I want, I want to be a millionaire. Okay, well, what have you done today to make you a millionaire? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I scratch off some lottery tickets. Okay, so you're doing the fucking bare minimum? No shit, you don't have nothing, you know? But yeah. there's nothing I ever wanted that, you know, healthy, you know, it, it sucks because it's the hard way. But choose your hard, man. Yeah, of course. Choose your hard. Uh, how, yeah, because you're going to wake up 40 years old eating pizza, drinking beer, working a shit job. And that sucks. That, that's hard. It sucks. Yeah. Fuck that. 4 a.m. Or get up at 4 a.m. and get under the fucking weights. That's it. <sighs> yeah. Then go to jujitsu practice. Then come home and work on your business. That's it. You know what I'm saying? That's Do a podcast with Musk and, 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 right <laughs> and listen, there's, there's nothing you guys, if you truly want it, work. Yeah. Because even if you miss the mark, you still hit the target, and you're sometimes it's even more beautiful. Mm. Like I said, I drove all the way to Vegas just to come back here. And and raise a, a beautiful son, mm. and that was not in the fucking plans mm. at all. Like if if you gave me like back then a choice to like kids no kids, I'd be hitting the no kids button mm. boop, 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 over and over again. But that's a crazy story too. So all it took was one time or what? I'm good like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy I made him with black belt sperm though. That's all I can say because he's a go. fucking G right now. He's so good. You were telling me he's throwing triangles. Yeah, he, black belt sperm. He's smart as a whip. You know what I mean? If I made him with some like white belt sperm, he'd be fucking, you know, stabbing himself in the eye with a fork yeah. and shit. Yeah. He's, he's not like that. He's all he's like looking at people and thinking. He's like observing. Yeah, yeah. he's like, nah, there's a technique for this, dad. I'm like, yeah, yeah buddy. That's, That's awesome. Good. That's good, man. What's it like being a dad? It's. Honestly, it's the greatest thing ever. It sounds cliche and all that bullshit, but it's it the first time, actually every time, but the first time you ever like an unsolicited I love you, yeah. you're just like, okay, this is it. This is forever. Mm. This is awesome. But every time he tells me love, every time I see him, I make it an effort every time I see him to like make it a big deal. Yeah. Because I remember like, because people, that's something like people lose with their kids, especially like kids become like a, a 
same thing with your girlfriend, you know, like make it a big thing when you see them like, oh, I'm so happy to see even if you're not like it makes it just changes him Mm -hmm. like, you know, because like as soon as he see each other, we're like, yeah, Yeah. and like, dude, ah, let's Mm -hmm. fucking go. And he runs over and I hope. Cause That's how sick. you how you greet him? I just wanted to give you a hug right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how you greet him? It like sets the tone for yeah. and, and now he's like so excited to see me all the time, and I make it an effort to be excited to see him, even if I'm having the worst day ever. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. And and it's challenging. I mean, he's tough. He's five years old. He wants to do all the crazy things, yeah. and he wants to be annoying. Ask me a million yeah. fucking questions, yeah. and I do my best to never lose my temper with him over dad. Why about this? What about that? Yeah. What about this? Right? You know, and I just, I try and be as patient as possible, which has helped me tremendously with white belts. Mm. Because at one point I was not very nice to white belts. I apologize to everyone that I was mean to. I used to be so fucking mean. I used to be so mean. I heard the same story about Hedis too. I heard Hedis used to be a dickhead. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I don't know if you're listening to this, but I'm sorry. Yeah, he was. Oh, Jimmy the bully. Yeah. Dude, I've seen him. Yeah. But what happens, (laughs) man? When something changes when you have kids or something. We yeah. talked to Ryan Benoit. We talked to a uh, UFC featherweight when mm-hmm. we went down to Texas, and he told us the same exact story. Yeah. Like he to. was a savage when he was in the cage and before he had kids, but then he had kids and something happened to him. He just, he just like eased yeah. up a little bit. Couldn't watch them gory videos yeah. anymore. I remember that. Yeah. Like he was watching those like them back page like uh, what was that fucking Reddit videos? Yeah, and, like the like, Reddit videos. Yeah. 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 Head was chopped off, off. and yeah. once he became a father, it was like it just wasn't in him anymore. But uh. I know your kid's still young, but do you have any idea of how you plan on, like, instilling a lot of the things that we're talking about today, like, in terms of philosophy and, like, just the ways of the world going forward? Like, is there any, like, do you envision a map for how the fuck you explain that to your kids? Um, It's always been from the beginning was uh, that I will always be as honest as I can be with him. Mm. And that was always important. And I, and I feel like, you know, that was something my mom did for me. You know, maybe she was a little too honest at times, but yeah. like, you know, as a, as a as a, a a like sophomore in high school, maybe I, I I was stealing her weed all the time, and at one point she was just like, "Ty, you don't have to steal it. We can smoke it, but you're not gonna go running around driving around with your friends. You're gonna smoke weed. We're gonna order pizza, and you're gonna sit here. And this is statute of limitations. My mom cannot go to jail for this anymore, corrupting a minor. But <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so for like a whole semester, like uh, Friday nights, they were or Saturday nights, they were like, "Yo, you want to go party?" I'm like, "Nah, I'm gonna go hang out with my mom." Mm. And they were like, "What?" Mm. My mom would roll a joint, we'd smoke, we watch the Big Lebowski, <laughs> and we'd order some fucking, and we'd order some fucking Dino and Francesca's, <laughs> and you know, and but but she taught me the importance of what weed really is. Where I, I had friends who were their parents were like, "Weed is crack cocaine." Yes, it's the same, the same, same, same. So when you finally smoke weed, you go, oh, they lied to me. This isn't crack cocaine. I'm not going to be. Yeah. So I guess they're lying to me about crack cocaine. Mm. You know, I mean, and people make that because mm. it's That's hard. That's how it happens. Wow. That's how it happens because you lie. And then, and then it, but the media did the same thing growing up. I, I grew up in it. It's crazy to me wow. that weed's like legal now. If and you just tell the truth, then you'll get the idea. Right? That's right. crazy because I've never heard it explained that way. But it is. But it, you know, heroin and it's the same. Don't it's all. It's always like weeds, the gateway drug, making it seem like it's weeds' fault but that why? people fall into these yeah. addictions. But it's but because it's just, of just like you said, yeah. people lied right? about weed. So yeah, exactly. no, you were lying to me about the effects of weed. Also, you're probably lying to me about the effects of fentanyl. And then you go, "Oh, dear. coke can't be that bad." If coke weed can't be that bad, right? Yeah. 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 I, I never heard it described I, that way, but that's that's a great perspective yeah. for that exact argument. Wow. Yeah, and my son's mother asked me the same thing. Like, what are you going to do when he asks you about weed? I'm like, be honest. Yeah. What do you mean? What are you going to say? I'd be like, listen, weed is medicine. You need to smoke it as such. You're not going to take Tylenol every day, all day, right? No. Mm-hmm. No, but, you know, you can smoke weed. And I, and there were times in my life where I abused weed. I'd smoke blunts morning, noon, and night. And I got yeah. friends who used to do that. And now at, at this point in my life, I, I had a buddy, Justin, who was just like, dude, like this blunt's still going. And I'm like, no, I'm good. I took three rotations. Mm. I'm, I'm straight. Ah, pussy. Uh, no, I'm good. Cool. Hmm. I don't need to abuse it, right? I need. I just need what I need from it. And, uh, and like I said, yeah, if you lie to people, yeah. they, they don't know where the lie ends and where it, mm. it, it begins and where mm. it ends. So they, they have to go and learn the hardship. But if you say, listen, it's, it's a medicine. It should be yeah. used. It's not for everybody, mm. you know, and you need to respect it because if you do too much of it, it's going to fuck you up. It's yep. going to make you lazy. It's going to make you a mm. loser. It has. Yeah. All the pitfalls are there, but that's like anything. If you eat too much McDonald's, yeah. you will be the same way. So you need to respect everything you put into your body. And, you know, yeah. And uh, 
definitely stay away from fentanyl. My, rest <laughs> in peace, my brother. My brother passed away uh, a couple of years, years ago. Yeah. Uh, so, and that was like before, like it was like a thing. People didn't even know. But like, so yeah. Wow. He went partying one night and then never saw him again. So, oh yeah. God. But that's, again, that's a real problem that like a lot of people experience. And I think that idea that like, you shouldn't sugarcoat it. Like, I, I guess to a certain degree, you probably have to because you don't need your, the world to be too real at that young of an age. Sure. But I think the the sugarcoating and the lying about like the reality of what we're actually experiencing can become a big problem. And for a lot of people, because a lot of people like partying, like you were talking about Vegas earlier, like everybody likes the idea of going out and having a good time, having fun with your friends, partying, laughing, drinking, whatever. But that can so easily take a wrong turn just from wanting to have enjoyment. And you might make one dumb decision one night and it costs you everything. Absolutely. But you shouldn't lie. You shouldn't lie about the reality of what actually goes on. And that's the thing, too, where don't lie. You, how do you become a, a good, respectable person? Do your best not to lie. Yeah. You know, yeah. Do, you know like, you know, your girl does this, just make me look fat. No, baby, you look good all the time, you know? But <laughs> there's certain lies, right? But, yeah, maybe hit the gym <laughs> instead of buying a new dress, bitch. No, <laughs> <laughs> no but... But there's that, but like I said, but you know the difference between a lie and, you know, something that should be said or not said, you know yes. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And too many people live a lie. Yes. That's all they do. They just lie constantly. To themselves. To themselves. Yeah, yeah man. And he and I have had that argument a bunch, like the difference between like a lie or when something should be said or when something shouldn't be said. Because that's a very hard conversation to have. Sure. It's hard. It's a hard conversation to have hard conversations. Yeah. yeah. Right. But, but it's hard to go to the gym. Yeah. It's hard to eat right. It's yeah. hard. Everything that is worthwhile in this world. Yeah. It comes with a sacrifice. Dude. Yeah. You must. You must. And you must be willing to, to be disciplined enough to live that. Mm. And that's something we lack in this day and age, too. It's all like. Let's just have fun. Let's just, let's do what feels good. That comes with a price, though. Absolutely. As we talked about, it comes with a price. Yeah. Absolutely. Anxiety, uncertainty. Yeah. Fucking, you don't know how to talk to people. That's you know, the game. Weird. All you're, the people, all the people who live for happiness end up miserable. Uh. But the people who are willing to put off happiness till later, they're always the happiest people. Because they, they're, they've experienced hardship, discipline, and they they know the difference. Like, you know, you you wouldn't know that a McDonald's burger tastes so good if you weren't eating broccoli and, and chicken. Well, they know? lie there too, man. They lie there when it comes to what we're eating today. Sure. Right? Yeah. That's Fuck. Everything's a lie. That's a whole conversation. That's itself, a whole different conversation. I think the, the trick to what you're saying, though, is um, although the, the necessary things might be difficult, I think that the trick is to find meaning in it. Sure. You know, I read this book one time. It was called Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. And he was, uh, he was a psychologist who was in concentration camps from Austria. And one thing he noticed was the people who were in the camps who had a reason for being there internally, those are the motherfuckers who survived. Absolutely. The people who lost all hope, the people were like, this is meaningless. I'm, I'm nothing. I'm just a, 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 something that's existing at this point. Those are the ones that fell off. But if you can create meaning, like, oh, I'm getting I'm getting to the gym early because of this and sticking to it, or I'm eating healthy because of this, or it can even be that you have a son. Like, I have to be this man, this which is difficult to be mm -hmm. because I know that there's this little motherfucker who's looking at every one of my moves, and that sure. there's enough meaning in that, Yeah. right? Yeah. So I think if you can apply meaning to the things that are seemingly difficult to live a uh, uh, an abundant lifestyle. Yeah, that's that's the trick. And that I think that's the 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 whole meaning of religion. Mm -hmm. is it gives people purpose. Sure. It gives, yeah. like, it gives them hope. Yes. And hopelessness. And uh, back to the media, they, they push nihilism. They push. Yeah. This is, this is the worst thing ever. It's the best thing ever. Yeah. The only way to be happy is to get the new phone, to get the new dress, to get the new shoes. To. But it's inadvertent, though. It's not like I'm just. They're just saying that. It's like they're showing it, and oh, it's yeah. like a comparison oh, thing. Like, look what I got. They look hit what you. I got. They hit you on all like, well, fronts. Yeah. Why don't I have that? Shit? No, but nihilism is a bitch. Like you said, hopelessness is is yeah. a real thing. Yep. Yeah. And yeah, you have to have purpose. And yeah. And it's hard to find purpose if you don't have community, have discipline, have yeah. friends, have a support system. And there's people out there. I feel bad. They don't have that. They don't have family. <coughs> they don't have friends. But it, the thing I can tell you: go join the jujitsu gym. Mm. Go, go join a fucking jujitsu. I'm telling you, it, 
when you become proficient enough in jujitsu, you start to go places. It's like if you were going to go to Europe or you moved away somewhere and you walk into a bar and it's like everybody speaks English. You don't even give a fuck that they're not your people. Or like, I wouldn't hang out with you otherwise, but we talked about, hey man, do you ever go to Six Flags? Yeah, I love Six Flags. <laughs> we could talk about just some commonality. With yeah. jiu-jitsu, it gives you that, and it, and it in built-in community. Like I said, I moved to Vegas. I walked into a place, and I speak the same language. Mm. So they go, oh man, you're one of us. Yeah. And so if you have nothing else, man, join a jiu-jitsu gym, because it, it, it's a community, and people, and it's good people, and it's healthy people, you know? I have this weird belief that... Purpose is discovered. Like our soul has a place to be and things to do. Mm -hmm. And like it's up to us, similar to like an archaeologist. You just have to brush off the dirt and to find it. Yeah. You know, and I think through experimentation, you could figure that out. Like, like when you first started jujitsu, right? Did it just feel right? Like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Or did it have to come over time? I, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it was one of those things where... I didn't know what it was or what it was doing, but I knew it was something I needed to be here for. It felt almost like certain things kind of feel like they're a, like a, it's like an alignment. Yes. Ah, this it, is the path. Very much, very much. Right? So, yes. I, I think I, I truly believe in that because throughout my life, as every man does, I, there's this quote that I really, really like. Any man who's looking to recreate himself must suffer for he is the marble and the sculptor, mm -hmm. Right. So you're going on this path of seeking my purpose. What's my, what, why am I here, right? So it's, it's obviously a very, very difficult path to be on. And I think every man goes through it who, who is at least seeking. But once you find something that is truly in alignment with your soul, it's like, oh, man. Yeah. This is it. This is, this is a piece of my puzzle. And then you keep going down that path and you keep on forging this, this person who is, you know, Something special, somebody special. I think uh, I think that's an interesting thing that I believe. The alignment. The alignment. No, I, I agree. I, I mean, completely. I, I don't want to get too deep into like, I know we've talked about it hundreds of times, but that's what it feels like doing this. It's like, yeah, I don't know how the fuck we're going to get to where we need to be, all of us. Um, but I just know that it all makes so much sense internally. Yeah. I, I can't explain it. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's very synonymous with what you're talking about. It's just a feeling that you don't necessarily have to understand. You just know it's there and you know it's real and there's no avoiding that. Yeah. It's it's there. Yeah. It's an odd thing, man. This fucking life that we're living is pretty crazy, isn't it? Bad company in, in the house. <laughs> <laughs> and it, boys, we just rocked like two hours. Yeah. Don't call her quits. Yeah. yeah, man. That felt good. I freaking appreciate you for being here, dude. Dude, I yeah. appreciate you guys. Like I said, this thing you're doing is it's special. Like, I don't know where it's going or where it's going to lead you guys, but... This is uh, this is important. It, it's not just fuck fuck around time. Yeah. But this is this is stuff that hopefully will inspire somebody else to do better for themselves and yep. and you know go get it, man. That's it. That's it. You guys gotta fucking go get it. That's it. Oh Oops. yeah. Oops. Appreciate you, man. Thank you for all the wisdom, all the gems. I'm hoping that you guys can get something from this. So yeah. Open up your listening cap. Yep. Thank you guys. And, uh, if you live in the Wilkes Bay area, Bad Company Jiu Jitsu Tap, and I just started IG? going. What's Instagram? What's the Instagram page? Bad Company BJJ. And there then you your personal? Ty Calv 570. Cool, man. So we'll have all that linked in the description. Check them out. All right. Phase two. Ah, yeah. Coming soon. <laughs> Coming soon. Peace <laughs> out, guys. Subscribe. I love you. Peace. Peace.